Okay, I'd like to bring the Upper Moreland Township regular meeting for February 6th uh, to order. First, could we have a moment of silence? Next Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. Can you take roll? Ward one? Present. Ward two? Here. Ward three? Here. Ward four? Here. Ward five? Here. Ward six? Here. Ward seven? Here. Mr. President, all commissioners are present. Okay, I'd uh, like to make the announcement. Uh, this board met uh, in executive session prior to this meeting for legal and personnel matters. Uh, next, uh, how about a motion uh, to open the public hearing? Make a motion to open a public hearing. Second. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay. Uh, Mr. Gilkenny, you want to take it from here? Uh, thank you very much, uh, President McFatridge. Uh, good evening, public. Tonight there will be a public hearing, a, a presentation, a legislative function of the Board of Commissioners. Decide if they're going to go ahead and uh, amend their zoning ordinance. This is part of the process uh, related to that. Uh, the board, there will be a presentation from Federal Realty, Mr. Garrity. Uh, there will be an opportunity for the Board of Commissioners uh, to comment and go ahead and ask questions. There will be an opportunity for public comment as well uh, after the commissioners ask their comments. And we um, ask, obviously, if you come up, you state your name and your address. Uh, and state your concerns or support for this application, then the Board of Commissioners can do a couple things. Uh, they can close the public hearing and take action on a pr proposed ordinance change, which you have related uh, later on, on the agenda. They could choose to uh, continue the public hearing to a date certain on the record if they so choose, if they want more information or anything like that, or they could um, you know, close the public hearing and decide not to take uh, action. Uh, so uh, what I uh, want to do is, uh, before I turn it over to Mr. Garrity to uh, make his presentation, I want to go ahead and, and mark some exhibits that we'll have for the record, T meaning township. So T1 will be a uh, copy of the application uh, for, uh, for this. T2 will be a copy of our um, um, the reviews of the Montgomery County Planning Commission and our APA. Uh, T3 will be engineer reviews uh, from uh, Gilmore engineers as well as our uh, as well as our traffic engineers, uh, and and then uh, T4 will be a copy of the advertisements of of this public hearing uh, for the record and all the requirements stated therein under the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Garrity uh, to make his presentation. Thank you, Sherlyn, and members of the board for the record. My name is Jim Garrity. I'm a land use attorney with offices in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, with the firm of Whistler Perlstein. With me tonight from Federal Realty, I have uh, Mark Brennan from Bernard and Architects. I have Neil Liebman, and I also have uh, from that firm Doug Lawton, and uh, from Studio 39, who has done a lot of the amenity work around the building. Uh, Siobhan Tuning is here with us this evening, so she could answer your questions as well. Uh, as I started out the last time I brought this to your attention, I'd first of all like to thank you for working with us, that is with Federal on the renovation of the Willow Grove Shopping Center through phases 1A and 1B, and now we're at phase two, which is the mixed use building we've been talking about for well over a year. Uh, th this building, first of all, the ordinance that, that I filed or requested is now uh, version 10 of the original uh, ordinance that was suggested because we've had three reviews by the Montgomery County Planning Commission and all the reviews that Sean previously mentioned. And we have tried to incorporate as many of those comments as we possibly can. Uh, it is probably our fourth or fifth time in front of you uh, to talk about 
uh, this building. Uh, there are, as you know, in, in the building, approximately 261 residential units, 59% of which are studio and or one, one bedroom and 41% um, two bedroom at, at the present time. There's also an internal green uh, in the middle of the building and two external mini parks on, around the building. And the first floor, of course, at the request of the township is um, on the shopping center side is certainly retail. On Park Avenue, there is no residential whatsoever um, as uh, the, super uh, the township had requested. Um, and there are really uh, down from the 11 page ordinance, we're down to about five pages now. And there's really only two significant things, if I can call them that, in the, in the ordinance. There's four sections, but there's only really two things. The one is that there cannot be, uh, that uh, there's no retail on Park Avenue provided at least 25% of the entire first floor of the building, including the parking garage, uh, has to be in office or retail and no more than 30% of that 25% can be office so that it's primarily retail and has to be primarily retail. And you've seen our plans and you'll see a lot more of them as we go through everything this evening. Um, it is clear that the township wanted retail more than uh, office. We have building amenity space in that area as well. So there'll be a rental office, uh, a fitness center, maybe a, a place to watch uh, television in a group, that type of thing. Um, and then the second thing in the ordinance that is of significance is that not on park, but in the middle of the shopping center, the building can be as high as 85 feet. Only if four conditions are met, those four conditions include the fact that the building cannot be any higher than 72 feet on park. So we're allowed 65 feet. Uh, we have asked to go to 72 feet on park and because it slopes pretty significantly downhill into the shopping center parking lot from there. We have asked for 85 on the other side. Uh, we have not increased the permitted density. We have not increased the number of floors. This isn't about uh, asking for more units or more anything. Uh, it's simply to permit us to have higher ceilings in the retail, which uh, is, is attractive to retail, and at least nine foot ceilings in the residences or apartments. Um, because that's the standard these days for luxury uh, type apartments. So they'll have very high ceilings for this type of use. We have attempted, as I said, to comply with all of the reviews from the Montgomery County Planning Commission and your comments. Um, many of your comments had to do with the fact that you want to see a, an attractive building. You want to see excellent architecture. You want to see the height of the building broken up both vertically and horizontally and our witnesses will deal with that in great detail this evening through uh, a presentation that everyone will be able to see. So with that introduction, uh, I would like to uh, pass the baton, if I could, to uh, Mark Brennan from Federal to go through the opening pages of the <coughs> booklet uh, that we have provided to the township for uh, all of you and for your consultants. Uh, Mr. Gary, do you have any, we, should we just swear him in or something like that? Should we just swear him in? Yeah. Oh, I can. No, no, he, the court reporter is asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want one both of us to? Well, Jim doesn't. <coughs> yes. Mark Brennan, M-A-R-K-B-R-E-N-N-A-N. I'm so this works. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you again for this opportunity. Um, when we last met, we talked again in depth about this project and went through some very specific things, which I think we're going to address this evening. But what I'd like to do is sort of go back and give you a, uh, you know, A to Z, exactly how we got here, what we're presenting, and what we're trying to bring to downtown Willow Grove area. Um, the shopping center is uh, located 
uh, between Moreland and Easton, uh, across from the Park Avenue municipal buildings, which are our current location this evening. It's about 180,000 square foot existing retail. Uh, there's some second level uh, retail in the middle of the project. Um, it's currently about 40% vacant. We have some significant second floor vacancies, which obviously create a challenge in this retail environment. And we've done a few things, and I'll walk through the, what we call three phases. Um, the first is we signed a lease with the grocery store, Five Below is open, and Marshall's is currently in the process of relocating from the uh, space in yellow to the new location. Um, and additionally, we broke ground on, park, on the building on Park Avenue, which I'll show you in a bit, but this is the existing center, 180,000 square feet of retail, second floor, not quite functionally obsolete, but certainly getting there with the existing vacancy. And, and just for the uh, just for clarity of record, yep. this was in the packet and a, a series of exhibits, a PowerPoint that was provided to township staff, and you were just referring to uh, page two of that exhibit. Correct. So yes. the exhibit I'm presenting this evening mm -hmm. is it virtually the same. We did move one page around to clarify a few things. Okay. But all the content is included in the packet. Okay. Just want clarity for the record. Absolutely. So when we look at the potential redevelopment opportunity here at Willow Grove, you know, we really spend a lot of time um, reviewing and going through the 2040 you know, comprehensive plan as well as the Willow Grove revitalization plan. And when we look at redevelopment, you know, we look at a few different facets, right? Connectivity, street level vibrancy, sense of place, function and form, and most importantly, successful redevelopment for the community. Uh, we've been at mixed use development um, primarily on the East Coast for about 30 years. And we believe that our expertise and the willingness of the township to present these opportunities will go a long way in downtown Willow Grove. So the, the project is broken into three phases. Phase one, which I talked about earlier, is the grocery store and Marshalls, and that is uh, nearing completion now. Uh, Marshalls will be complete later this summer. And we recently broke ground on Retail F, which is along Park Avenue. And you're on page four of your exhibit. So, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. It goes in order from the mm -hmm. book. There's one page that's out of order. Making sure it's great for him. That's yes. all. Uh, retail F is 18,000 square feet. It allows us to relocate some existing tenants in the phase three um, demise premises to facilitate the ultimate redevelopment on phase three. And phase three is five and a half acres. It's the primary reason we're here this evening. Um, and the goal is essentially to open up the entire site, both along Easton and brings con connectivity from Park Avenue down to Easton. So we look at the proposed phase three development, you know, you could see a few things have happened. One, we have a long wall of existing retail in Easton, which we are taking down. We're opening up the visibility and the site corridors uh, from York and Memorial Park area uh, up the hill to Easton. Uh, in addition, we're creating what we call Willow Grove Lane, which is a north-south uh, internal roadway which will connect Park Avenue uh, to Easton and as you can see now from the current construction going on we've already laid the formwork out to create that road which will be directly perpendicular um, to the intersection at Moreland where the library is on Park uh, between the, the township building and the public library. And that was uh, you were looking at the TV, uh, the five, page five. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and the, there are a few other elements here, and this is what came up. Sean, would it be helpful if we just uh, describe the plan? I mean, this That'd be great. is page five, but just call it master, master plan. plan. It says master so, so, yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. So this is the master plan. Um, in addition, we'll add about uh, 10,000 square feet uh, where D is indicated. Uh, it's the current home of Marshalls. It will sort of bookend uh, the development along Easton Road. And on this plan, you'll see a few things that are sort of highlighted in oval. Uh, it's our public spaces. We have about 11 public spaces throughout the project. Uh, I'll detail them more in the future, but essentially it opens up everything along Easton and York uh, looking into the project. So at the last meeting, we did spend a little time about the size of the public um, spaces, right, and the, and the ability to program them. So the main public feature really is on the upper left-hand corner. Uh, this is the plaza plan area comparisons. We have about uh, almost 10,000 square feet of public area which can be programmed for outdoor space, for events. Uh, in comparison, when you go to uh, King of Prussia, you'll see 
plazas that are significantly bigger, but in comparison to what is there, they have 400,000 square feet of retail on 125 acres with 3,000 residential units. Um, the 5,500 and the 42, right, it sort of will create a public realm of streetscape, landscaping, and hardscape, which will be a focal point for the community. Um, 5,500 square feet is larger than a full basketball court and about two times the size of a single tennis court. Barracks Road Shopping Center is one of ours, and there's a, a picture, so I want to include the size here. This is 4,200 square feet, and it's about a 500,000 square foot retail site. In addition to the larger ones I just showed you, there are about a half dozen other ones um, along Easton, uh, internal to the center, and along Park, which will further enhance the public area amenities. And these are just some, you know, precedent images. Um, I think everyone's familiar with, with King of Prussia, so this is some of the options that they have for their public space. The bottom right-hand corner is Barracks Road. It's one of our existing centers, and this uh, serves about a half million square feet of retail, but you can see it's an activated uh, public plaza with a fountain, seating, and a cafe area. So the overall project, when you include all three phases, is about 130,000 square feet of retail, 260 dwelling units, a uh, residential parking garage with about 500 spaces, and 542 surface spaces. So if you're out there now, you'll see all the construction for Retail F. Uh, this is 18,000 square feet. This will be uh, adjacent to the new Willow Grove Lane, which is currently under construction and it will house uh, a mix of retail and restaurants. Um, we're also upgrading the facade and public areas in and around Panera with additional outdoor seating. And the residential now will be on the uh, east side of this new Willow Grove Lane. The main residential lobby will be on the corner of Park and Willow Grove Lane. Um, and there'll be some uh, parallel parking spaces along Park and um, drop off areas in front of the residential lobby there identified in G. And that was, you were referring to an enlarged plan retail building app. Correct. So this is the building app which we just spoke about. Again, you'll see some plaza areas along uh, Park Avenue. This will be right in front of the existing library. Um, there's also crosswalk enhancements that are going to take place on both sides of the street that are not indicated on this plan. This is retail app uh, looking inboard of this in from the site out to park. As you can see, outdoor seating areas, new tenant signage, uh, an upgraded um, placemaking and hardscape, and uh, abilities for, ten for tenants and pedestrians to walk from uh, the interior portion of the project back out to park. This is just a little uh, close up of the area I showed you earlier. Um, we're doing cafe. Um, zones along the building face, both on Willow Grove Lane and what we call Salix Drive. Uh, there'll be common areas and public gathering spaces outside of Retail H in the bottom right, and then a little park lay area here uh, to service the retail uh, and potential restaurant at the corner of Salix Drive and Easton. And again, this space, the Salix Drive, everything in gray, uh, you know, can be closed off and do farmer's markets and public spaces. So this would be sort of the new town center for what we like to think is the new downtown Willow Grove. This is the new retail um, uh, and residential building. This is the same one we were talking about, right? So there's parallel parking in our park. And on Park Avenue, and you'll see some future renderings, but we're gonna have sort of townhouse apartments with direct access out to Park Avenue in lieu of the retail that Jim spoke about earlier. And then the uh, building will be serviced by a large residential uh, courtyard interior to the building and a parking garage which will serve both the retail and the residential. So the overall program, again, you can see townhouse units along park, the amenity and uh, residential lobby in the corner of Park and Willow Grove Lane, ground floor double height retail along the interior portion, and then retail at the corner of Salix Drive in Easton. And now I'd like to bring up Neil Lehman to sort of walk through some of the architecture. Um, he is the design architect, uh, done several projects for us, and has been here on this one from the beginning. Thank you. 
clip. Yeah, right. yeah. So we don't lose it. <laughs> You'll need. Okay. And you're on Perspective One Park Avenue Street. <laughs> Neil Liebman, L-I-E-B-M-A-N. Uh, good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, my name is Neil Liebman. I am the president and principal of Bernard and Architecture Firm, um, based out of Philadelphia, uh, Westchester, Wilmington, and many other places. Uh, we've been engaged to provide the architectural studies uh, for this project, working hand in hand with Mark along with Siobhan, who's here, uh, my colleague, uh, Doug Lawton. So when we first started this project, uh, we looked at how much density we can get to fit here to support the, the project and as a whole and to better serve the entire um, uh, Willow Grove re revitalization of the shopping center. Uh, we did many studies, and this is our final uh, renderings that we prepared um, for the project. The view you're looking at now, perspective one, uh, on page, I can't see that. 16. 16, thank you. Um, is a view looking uh, west on uh, Park Road, looking down the street um, from closer to Easton Road. Um, and as Mark had mentioned, uh, one of the concepts here was to develop these townhouse looking uh, places. They are actually townhouses, they're two story units. Uh, there's two of them, they're stacked towns along Park to really emphasize how we could. Um, create a great sense of place along park. A primary, a lot of our uh, emphasis of the architecture started with park and then how to really continue to enhance the architecture around the entire shopping center, or excuse me, the entire building. Um, you next slide? I'm oh, sorry. That's it. Right. I'll stand over here. Um, this view is uh, perspective two, looking the opposite direction from what you just saw. Again, um, looking down park. Um, this, the very, the right-hand side or the far right-hand side of the image is where the entrance is to Willow Grove, uh, to Willow Drive, um, and the, the entrance to the rest of the uh, shopping center. Um, the corner of the building here would be the main entrance to the shop, to the um, to the building itself, uh, where our amenity space occurs, um, as well as you can have access to the two-story. Um, Townhouses further if you walk down a Carter and you also have entrances to the townhouses directly onto park itself um, I know uh, one of the large uh, one of the most important parts we've been discussing is the height of the building The ordinance allows us to go to 65 feet and there's a request to go to 72 feet along park uh, This diagram represents a height of just over 70 to the parapet I believe your ordinance requires that the dimension is to the top of the roof the parapet is about about a foot higher than the actual roof level itself. Um, the height is determined. I'll get further as we get further down the road. I'll show you an exhibit uh, in terms of how we develop the, the height of the building based on the requirements, uh, as Mr. McGarity said, about floor to floor heights and ceiling <coughs> heights that are basically required for a luxury level uh, apartment project. So close up view, perspective three. Um, Again, on park, um, we created uh, patio uh, areas for these residents of these units themselves. Uh, again, that would be a private patio. They can also enter and exit their, their uh, apartment from this side directly to park, or they can enter and exit their apartment from inside the building itself. Yeah, I think it's important to note here, and we've talked about it at length, right, the activation of on Park <coughs> Avenue. Um, you know, we, we obviously are going to have retail inboard of this site uh, with the double height ceilings, but this run from Easton into the, you know, the main entrance that sits across from the library is key. And the activation and the outdoor units here really provide that, that street level scape. You know, it's replete with additional hardscape, landscaping, site lighting. So it's important to realize that this portion of park will be very active across the building we're in today. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so part of the, to create a great place, create a great building, is not just about creating buildings, it's also about creating a sense of space and, and place. This has a fabulous streetscape. It's enhanced by the detailing, the richness that you can see in the building. There are two different, three different brick colors that you can see. It's not all, it's not a monotonous looking building from any stretch of imagination. We're, we're, we're breaking down the building in terms of its scale 
and its size by introducing colors, by introducing height, by introducing materials. Uh, you can see the, the metal canopy versus uh, more of a storefront look. You can see the corbeling of the brick. Uh, you can see the, the details of the, um, the window heads um, with you know, some, some simulated stone. Um, so it's a pretty high-end finish um, and, and detailing all along Park Avenue that we've paid a lot of attention to, knowing that, and we're trying to reserve and respect the architecture of this building that you created with the brick, and that's why, that's why this building is brick here, because we're looking at what's across the street. So trying to fit in with the neighborhood um, and understanding that the height is still an issue. And you can't see it in this image, but one of the other images you'll notice that the, the, the top of the, the building uh, has a slight slope to it looking like almost like a mansard roof. So it's not just the detail at the street level, but it's the detail throughout the entire height of the building. Uh, again, this is um, where we enter into the site. You can see it, it's showing the, the design of the entrance to um, the residential community, a portion of the building once again. Um, going um, this this uh, nighttime view nighttime image of we're now inside on silex um, on silex drive and Will Willow Grove Lane uh, you're standing at that intersection looking back at the building I know there's conversations about uh, the height uh, as we get further into the property um, again the building uh, is actually significantly higher uh, in the, at this location internally on the site mostly because there's about a 10 foot grade drop from Park Ave Park all the way down to Salex. So trying to keep the, the floor lines of the residential building itself must align um, uh, for constructability for a lot of other reasons, ADA, so forth. So that makes the building taller internally to your site. Yeah, but what it does now is allow us to have a 20, I think it's 24 foot clear retail experience, right, which is, you know, key now for um, both restaurants and soft food retailers. Uh, there's, there'll be a mix here. Um, but, you know, restaurants today, you know, need the outdoor area, right? So this is that public plaza that I spoke about earlier. Um, and then, you know, it's got additional site lighting, landscaping, hardscape, placemaking, public areas. And then as you head further uh, right, which is east, you'll see the service entrance to the building, and then there'll be more retail along east. This is um, perspective five on sheet 21. For the record okay so uh, this is perspective six sheet 22 I can count because I can't see the numbers um, so uh, this is looking from Easton Road um, up to Salex Drive and again we're being, we're trying really trying to engage some activity along Easton um, the part one of the parklets that um, that Mark had mentioned as you can see it on the right hand side um, again, the hope that there would be some kind of uh, maybe hopefully restaurant or some other thing, other type of activity at this corner, which would further engage the park and so forth. And um, again, you can see a lot of detail on the corner here with, again, with the brick, uh, with some metal panels to break up the architecture. And also in this image, you can see that there's a lot of change and variation in the parapet lines. Again, this is to help with the scale of the building and um, change, make it more attractive so that it's not just one continuous monolithic building yeah. facade. Yeah. And this is the view you get as you're leaving the train station heading up Easton, right? So it was important to capture this spot for us. Um, you know, obviously this building is an important part into downtown Willow Grove. I think this whole center will act as a town center for the community with the proximity of the train station. So we spent a lot of time on this corner, right? With comments from the CDC and the, and the board at large to sort of get it right and what the visibility is from Easton. So it's really important that you, you see here in this image, you can see the storefronts are taller, taller glasses. Mark was saying we have taller ceilings um, for our retail or restaurant users that require those types of spaces. So perspective seven on 24, I'm up to, um, 23, excuse me. Um, so this is more looking from Easton, from the other, probably from the other side of Easton, looking back up CLX Drive um, before anyone gets into any kind of panic or ideas about the, that's the garage. Um, we are looking at a lot of different opportunities 
to treat the garage, and I will get into that in a further slide. Uh, this happens to be one concept. Uh, we'll call it our floral uh, garden arrangement to really enhance the image of the garage. We do have the garage on this side of the building. As Mark said, there's 500 parking spaces in this garage. It's a big building. The garage itself is a large building. Um, it's completely enclosed on three sides, um, but it is open on this side of the project. And again, this is for sort of illustrative purpose only. At the last meeting with the, with the CDC, it was important to be able to come up with a creative design, whether it's painting or mesh panels or some sort of architectural metals. And we do have some other options in the next slide, which will show sort of the art of the possible. Um, we're not married to any of these designs, but I think it's crucial to understand that the effort we put in um, to the design of the building, which is a little bit further enhanced, will also go into how we treat the garage that faces east. Uh, just so you're aware, this is the building that we do not own. Um, for those that are new to the project, it sits on the corner of Easton and Park. Um, we would like to own it perhaps, but at this point we have been unable to do so. So we've designed the building obviously around that little uh, parcel in the corner. So this is uh, page 24, the parking garage for facade screening concepts or ideas. Um, as Mark said, we're, we're looking at all a lot of different types of ideas, maybe something that's a little bit more colorful like you see in the floral pattern. But before I go there, so on the upper left-hand corner of this page, this would be the garage untreated. So if we just had the side of the garage, um, you've seen other garages that are there, it's a precast panel. Um, the garage will be built as a precast, not. And so that would be if there was nothing happening. So we, we, we recognize that that's not what you desire. So um, we're gonna look at opportunities. So. We've started actually, our first image was the one on the right, which we call the historic roller coaster. And I believe, Doug, if I'm correct, that's an image of the Willow Grove roller coaster. You know, how do we implement that either into a combination of metal panels or screenings um, to come up with something that's historic to, to Willow Grove? Uh, the floral pattern on the middle left, uh, you saw that on the other image. This is a, just the overall side. Uh, of that building would be more floral, more colorful, more dynamic. Um, again, this is uh, just another concept. Again, it would be treated, it would be handled with a series of metal panels that would be attached to the side, per perforated panels that would be attached to the side of the garage and a combination of just painting of the garage itself, the garage with precast. Uh, middle right is a geometric pattern. Um, the bottom left is a gradient pattern um, just more with just again with some panels and different treatments to handle the, the maybe the height or maybe relate to the existing building that Mark, as Mark mentioned we don't own uh, try to bring the scale of the garage down a little bit either what we call the gradient pattern or the graphic map pattern um, the graphic map pattern would be some type of a graphic map that was applied to a metal panel uh, screening that would look like a possibly a map of of, of Moreland, Upper Moreland Township so there's a lot of things we can do. Um, like I said, these are all things that we're looking at. We're not tied into any one specific concept yet, but we are working on the final con what a final concept could be. So again, so, Anthony, I just wanted, so this is the section drawing, right? We spoke about this a little at the uh, last uh, hearing. And we did obviously include the height of the, on the building, and I can go back to the light. Um, but it's important to note here, right? So, so this is the Park Avenue facade, um, and the top of the parapet is about 72 inches. Uh, the building roof stays flat all the way across. And what we do is we pick up the grade change as you head down into the site to provide that 24 foot clear for the retail. So we're not adding any more floors. Uh, the zoning required allows six stories or 65 feet. Uh, we're staying at six stories. And we're all are asking is that in most, I would say virtually all buildings um, that are built today, and, and Neil can uh, provide the exact number perhaps, but nine foot uh, air ceiling heights is the minimum, right? It's the requirement to keep a project long-term lease and viability. Um, I think the last thing we want here is an investment of this size into the community to ultimately realize that we were short three or four inches and all of a sudden now there's vacant units and uh, the overall vibrancy of this downtown location uh, is no longer there. So that's the difference between the 65 feet in the current code and the 72 feet which we're asking for in the revised amendment. 
Uh, let me also add a couple things to that. So the, all of the perspectives that you've seen here tonight, as well as this image, they're all modeled in uh, what we call SketchUp, which is a modeling program. SketchUp. Um, they are real in terms of the modeling, computer modeling of these. These are not, there's nothing that would throw your eye off that these are the heights um, uh, that we are articulating in the images of the renderings themselves. The, the floor to floor heights, as Mark had mentioned, um, even some affordable housing projects that we're doing today, we're not doing anything under nine foot ceilings. It's just, that's the commonplace. You know, years ago it was eight foot ceilings. Now it's nine foot ceilings. Maybe in 10 years it's 10 foot ceilings. Who knows, it's gonna make the buildings go higher. Um, and coupled with HVAC requirements, other mechanical requirements, you need that floor to floor height. And I will tell you that it's hard to see in this image, but uh, the 10 foot eight floor to floor height that you see that, to, that helps determine the overall height of this building for the residential units itself, that is the absolute minimum that we can build these buildings to, to achieve this nine foot ceiling. Um, and, and this is a wood frame construction building from that dark black line that you see up. It's all wood frame. Everything below there is concrete or mason uh, and steel. So we, we've, we've done enough of these buildings. We have thousands of units that we've built just like this in this format. This is as tight as we can make it. And the 14 foot, as Mark had mentioned, on the amenity space, uh, again, we want to have you know, ceilings that are this high in some areas. So really help with the environment and what you're trying to create in these communal spaces with inside of the space that are be able to use by the residents, whether it's a fitness center, uh, whether it's a co-working space where you can go and, uh, and actually do your work if you're living there. Um, you know, with COVID's changed the world, right? So people are doing more, many, many more people are working from home. Well, if you're in an apartment, they're, they're good sized units. They're not the biggest thing. So you have opportunities to go work somewhere in the amenity space. Uh, so um, there's also, there's, there's game rooms, there's media play centers, there's other things that you can do. There's a lot of activities that go on that make these, these residents special. It makes people want to rent and live here. That concludes the prepared presentation. Happy to take questions, obviously, from the board or... Yeah. And it's the board. Board first. The board. Yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, any discussion from the board? I, I just have a, a <coughs> incidental question. Uh, on the grocery store building, uh, I understand we were promised uh, stainless steel panels uh, uh, with the willow tree and perhaps welcome to Willow Grove. Correct. And what I see now is doesn't look anything like that. You are absolutely right. And we are actually sending them back to the fabricator in Pittsburgh to fix it. <coughs> Uh, so yes, unfortunately, um, when shop drawings are done, I don't want to get too much into construction, but the panels that are, that are up were not approved, <coughs> and we're sending them back, and they will be refabricated uh, and reinstalled, and the lights that uh, will illuminate them will be done in, in short order. So right. yes, I am more frustrated than you, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely. So we, we've been working with you for a long time and, and with flexibility and, and not just uh, the last year. I think we've been all looking at uh, these opportunities in the shopping center for 15, 16 years, 20 years, and uh, we've never gotten this close. I'm uh, very excited about this. Uh, the height is an issue. Uh, one of the things we're concerned about is what's the top of the building going to look like from up on the hill. If I'm up on division, I'm looking down at the top of the building. What's it going to look like? So I do have an image that we were able to pull up um, as you head down the hill. It, unfortunately, we weren't able to get it prior to the submission on Wednesday, um, so I, but I did bring it with me. Uh, so this is, as you're heading down east, uh, this is the first vantage point where either the church or the funeral uh, home uh, don't block the view um, of the vantage point to park. And as you can see, this was the, uh, again, Doug's here as, as well. Um, this is the rendered image uh, that you would see as you're sitting at the intersection of Easton and Center as you head down the hill. So yes, you will be able to see the building uh, at this vantage point, but as you head further up the hill um, and you're heading uh, down when, into- When I referred to from the top of the hill, I was more like division 
Yeah, the, the, the church buildings up there block most of it. Um, this is the first point where you're going to see anything of any substance. Uh, Kevin's talking about the, the, uh, the other side. Uh, we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. Top not, of the hill. Uh, look at that side. But yes, you will obviously uh, be able to see the building as you head down past uh, the station. So one of the things we did discuss was screening of any kind of a rooftop uh, apparatus. Yeah. So if you go, if I go back to the original presentation. Um, <clears throat> So yes, there, there will be mechanical and rooftop units um, on top of the building, obviously, to service the building. And there will be um, areas for uh, the mechanical room and stairwells to, to leave. Um, one second, that's my attorney, by the way. <laughs> so, thank you, Jim. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe I can help you address the mechanical. So. There are no large mechanical, like there's no tractor trailer size mechanical equipment that you've seen on other maybe commercial buildings on these roofs. Um, the small, that you can see in the image on the far left hand side of building section AA, there, those are small um, condensing units like you would see in your house. Um, they're, they're pretty small. So there is one for every unit. Um, the larger, that's an elevator overrun that you see there and then there will be some larger makeup air units but they're not very big so i'm not even, i'm not sure if you're that far away how much you'll see of the mechanical itself do you will you see the building i think you will see the building um although we haven't as mark said we haven't studied it from that vantage point so it, it's it's been discussed on several occasions you know as much as we're concerned about uh what it looks like the exposed part of the garage, you know, and then uh, it's like one of the highest points in Montgomery County. You're looking down at the top of a building, you know, and we have discussed what we would like to hear you guys say about possibly screening this area. Of the garage or of the rooftop? Yeah. The rooftop. Well, no, we talked about the garage. Yeah, you know. the garage will certainly be treated. Um, I don't think there's a current requirement to screen the rooftop units. Um, they will be partially blocked by the top of the parapet. Um, so if you can see from the section drawing in, right, so the, the top of the roof is about 68 feet, 8 inches, and the mechanical units will sit at that, again, correct me if I'm wrong, there will be some dunnage. And the, the mechanical units are set back from the edge of the roof, right. and we've studied not seeing, and you won't see mechanical equipment from on the streets that we are on. We got that. Think, and we have not studied it from <laughs> the top of the, I mean, that's so far away. Um, I don't know what to, I mean, it's like at some point in time, we, you'd, I think adding a roof screen on the edge of this roof could be more detrimental. And I, I would, I would can study that as well, but you put a roof screen on the edge of this, you're gonna make the building look even taller. So I think that we have we definitely studied it from where you can really feel and see these units and you cannot see them from this building from, and we've walked all around the building and make sure that these, uh, the HVAC is set back far enough from the edge of the roof but I, I, I I'm not going to tell you you can't you won't see them looking down from an extremely high point I can't tell you that okay um, I'm very anxious to hear what the public has to say we've okay. beat this up a lot uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm excited to this is going to be a really neat project um, I do have a few questions First, the dilemma is, is the height. I'm not necessarily against the six stories, but across from our township building, and longer than our township building just is, is concerning. Um, but I'll get to my question. So um, my first question is, how many square feet of retail is there? I know it's based on 50%, and then I have, to, I have to break down here because I don't want to speak on turn. Um, I remember lots of things on everything. Um, we're proposing 20,000 square feet of retail, non-residential space for the building. Um, we've come to an agreement that, let me just get this right, no more than 30% of the 20,000 will be office. We understand the general. Oh, so the 20,000 includes office and Correct. Email? It, it is yeah. what we would like to call commercial space. Okay. Right? So, so non-residential, non-amenity space. 
on the ground floor of the building, and it's made up primarily, exclusively what you see in, uh, let's say, pink or, or red there. Um, the yellow portion of it uh, along Park and the upper portion of Willow Grove Lane will be lobby and amenity space, and everything in green uh, is the common area courtyard um, where we'll have some units that face into the courtyard as you go up the building. So there's 20,000 square feet of commercial space. No more than 30% of that will be office because I understand the sensitivity to have non, to not have non-retail uses in the project. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, another question I have is um, the bonus provisions, and I asked this at the CDC meeting. I'm not sure why we have added, I get why we added Park Avenue, I'm not sure why we're adding Moreland Road for the tax amendment for the bonus provisions. I'll let Jim answer, but I think our parcel fronts all of them. Um, it, it, the parcel fronts on all those roads, but yeah. the county in particular said, you know, why mess around calling it a public street, just say on Park Avenue, it has to be 72 feet, and that's why. The ordinance says park out. Right. I'm concerned that there doesn't seem to be a reason to add Moreland Road also. I think we added all the frontages. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just I was just trying to keep it the way your existing ordinance is. Um, your existing yeah. ordinance references what what it calls principal roads. So I just so you did the, the same concern, thing. My concern is that what you want you want to have these bonus provisions for this apartment building that we're looking at here. But my concern is this also allows these same bonus provisions at some right. point in the future for an apartment building at Park Can I jump in here? Yes. Uh, when we built the Wawa, uh, there was a lot of concern about the text amendment. Uh -huh. you know, it was new realization to me that, wow, you can do stuff that you know, isn't in the, in the ordinance by text amendment. Um, so my, my, I think Cheryl, the question Cheryl is asking, uh, isn't this, when, when they did the Wawa, they defined very clearly what the area was that it applied. It was, you know, the railroad tracks and uh, Easton Road, uh, so many yards from this and that. Um, so I'm, I, I would like to see that the text amendment, you know, is worded in that, in that way. So you can't be building a 70, 80, 72 or 80 foot building on Moreland Road. Is that correct, Cheryl? Um, again, I just followed your existing ordinance, um, but oh, uh, but there wasn't a reason to add, for instance, that the building um, will be visible on three yeah. streets. I'm sorry, was that? It, it, I think there's a you started to read it. There's a section that says it has the building has to be visible from a certain number of streets, and right, exactly. that's all stuff that was in the ordinance already. Right, and I agree. And a, a located at a prominent corner of streets in the township such as it did say East New York and Davisville, and you're adding Moreland and Park. I don't know why you're adding Moreland. Well, we're not on the, unfortunately, we're not on the corner of Park and East. So well, we're, I hear all that. Yeah. Not yet. I add Moreland. <clears throat> and, and yes, my concern is. Uh, just to make it three streets, because I think the other reference was to, uh, isn't there a reference to Davisville? Yeah, and, and we're nowhere near Davisville, so we had to get we three streets to agree with your ordinance. Can, can I request that you put up the overall site plan exhibit so everybody can see the streets that we're talking about, and it might help clear up the, the questioning? Yeah, so th this is a this is perfect. Right? So, so we, we front ostensibly uh, just park and a very little sliver along Easton. We don't own a, the, the majority of the portion uh, along Easton in the corner of park so our building frontage is along park uh, and then a very little sliver here along along Easton but this building is not owned by so we're not on a prominent corner by any stretch so I think in order to get zoning text requires it to be in a prominent location um, and so I think we had to add Moreland and Park as a indication of, of the corner that we own I don't think it's any more than that what, what the concern here is uh, uh, sort of from uh, Cheryl and us, the upper corner up in here, yeah. since you added Moreland Road, uh, that underneath this with the extra provisions, that you would put another one of 
this complex over here. That's what I don't. I don't think uh, the way that it's uh, worded. I think yeah. they could. They would still be entitled to that without having more than road. Yeah, I don't there. think we. Well, well, the way then it needs to be changed. My point is it's that the whole parcel. It worded, it's the whole parcel. We don't want it worded that allows it another right. one at Park and Moreland. Uh, that allows the bonus provisions for a building at Park and Moreland. Anything that anything TC one gets bonus provisions. Yeah, and that's going to be approved by the board. Yes, what? Any uh, parcel in TC1 is entitled to bonus provisions. If it's it, on a prominent corner, which we're now adding, the prominent corner was East in New York and Davisville, and now we're adding. The well, so the whole parcel. But we're not on a. So, unfortunately, again, I'm, we're not on a prominent corner. I, I get that you need. So, if I take off Moreland, we don't comply with any of that. I get portion. that it needs changed. To, for this building, correct. But I just need to be sure the way it reads now, it could apply then to also the building at Park and Is my concern. But I think no matter what we do to in, to in or to modify the text amendment to include this, <coughs> will include the entire parcel because we're on TC one. Yeah, let let the lawyers work this out. We don't want we don't want another building like that on the corner of Park and Moreland or the okay. corner of Park. Uh, I'm uh, Moreland and Easton. We're not proposing it on a building. I'm, I'm I know you're not proposing for... it. <laughs> we don't want we don't want anybody to, 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 to do it. So hold, hold on one sec. The question here, Mark, what is the square footage of all of this? Exclude that garage. Uh, so the... okay. uh, in, in other words, I need yeah, it, I need it, from here. It, Essentially, it's uh, each unit roughly averages about a thousand uh, unit, a thousand square feet. So it's plus or minus. Right? I'm not including all the mechanical and, and non-retail or non-resi space, but it's about 260,000 square feet of residential, uh, with 15,000 square feet of amenity, a 14,000 square foot okay. courtyard. One floor. Okay. I, I mean, one floor of the residential. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can't read it. Uh, that's what I was reading. Total area is 308,000. Yeah, the, the the whole building is about three hundred eight thousand. Okay, but what what my point is, you know, in our zoning, I don't I, probably everybody else doesn't understand this. Uh, in zoning, we in TC one, we only allow one hundred fifty five thousand square feet of residential on a layer. Okay, so that would preclude if whatever this amount is, okay, the square footage here, okay, of one floor, okay. In that shopping center, you wouldn't be allowed to put. You'd only be, available would be the remaining of 155,000 square feet. Correct. So what I was wondering is, what is one? Let's say the third floor. What is that whole third floor? What's the square footage yeah, so <laughs> of the apartment? So they're about 50,000 square foot floor plates. Yeah, 52. The first one I think is 48, and then it's 51 as you go up. Okay, so you would still be able to put another building up. So uh, here's no. where that. So here's the other thing that the existing ordinance says that the building will be visible from two streets located. So if, if we kept it at two streets and, it, and added park, then, but instead you changed it to three and added one. Line That's the problem with having so many versions of this in on the first page in the lower left hand corner does the number there end with a 10 because you said two streets and my version says three three streets i'm saying the existing ordinance is two streets it says the building has to be visible from at least three streets and i think that's what your ordinance i'm looking says. at number two i printed it it's i'm looking at number yeah number two In fact, that's, I, I think that is the real reason we added Moreland, because it said three. So I had to get three. I'm looking, I okay, I'm looking at 2A. I printed it um, over the weekend. 2A. Two, two we didn't have a 2A. 
Does it say three public streets? It says the building will be visible from two streets and located at a prominent corner, such as East and Davisville and York Road. Could Willow Lane constitute one of those roads? No. 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 But York Road could. York and Easton would. Um, I, I think the, diffi the difficulty is you're reading from the ordinance that has probably already been modified for the Petrucci project, but not this project, because this well, whole I took it from online. begins with a three. Is it not? Okay, well, either way, my concern is that yeah. I don't want the ordinance changed to automatically allow the bonus provisions for a building at Park and Moreland. Whatever it says, make it so. Exactly. We want it. So the question is, if Moreland Road was stricken from this ordinance, would it still be applicable? No, because we're not on a prominent corner. So that, that part of the, the TC1 district, right, in its fundamental component, is, is looking for a prominent corner. And we, unfortunately, don't have a prominent corner because we don't own the parcel on... Uh, no, Easton is a Easton Road is a prominent corner in Easton Road. One's a county road, one's a state road. They're, they're two different roads. It's six eleven. And the way you've York. changed it, you don't have to be on the prominent. And York Road you have to be visible from at least three of those streets. Right, that's that. You do have to be visible from three streets, and that's why Moreland was put in because two of the streets here are both named <coughs> Easton. Okay. Yeah. My <clears throat> what I printed said two street. Either way. You know what our concern is. It doesn't matter what it says. This is, this is what we would like. We'd like it to say, no, you can't build another 60, uh, 72 foot building on, on, the, on the property. That's what we would like. Uh, <laughs> You're talking about the, the 85 foot height, sir? Any height. So you don't want another well, the resident? The existing ordinance says 65. Would right. be precluded from doing an as of right building somewhere else on this project in the future? I'm, I'm trying to see what we We're do. We're trying not to give the bonus provisions to another building at Park and Moreland. We don't want to give it to both. We're giving it or contemplating giving it to this building. But so the concern is that the way the text amendment is worded that it would also give these bonus provisions which is height and the 155,000 square, square foot footprint it would also be giving it to the building at park, All right, a so possible building at park in moreland commissioner locker and commissioner skull under the existing ordinance they would be entitled to bonus provisions and entitled them to 65 feet now mm -hmm. at any location on this correct mm -hmm. well, that's even worse the way I, well, maybe I don't have a current thing. I printed this from our website, but no, I, I, th I think you do. I think I think where the the language, Commissioner Lockhart, is is tripping us up, is the existing ordinance states located at a prominent corner such as and doesn't specifically define a corner. specific corner, and it doesn't define what a prominent corner is. And so what this text amendment is being requested to do is strictly define those prominent corners as boundaries of their site. Correct. And I understand your point. Um, the trick here with this site is that the majority of this property is bounded by Easton Road. And so your problem is that you don't have Two prominent corners, let alone three prominent well, corners. I left all the ones in that were already in there. Mm -hmm. And you don't. York, Davisville. It, but you don't meet those. Right. Correct. Because York and Davisville aren't near this. Right. And so I'm wondering how we can come to an agreement here because I am 100% behind Commissioner Locker and behind Commissioner Skull here that having two buildings of this proportion on this site would be prohibited. Uh, but I also believe that I think, uh, to Commissioner McFatrick's point, the site as it's currently standing, owned by one entity and being one large parcel, I don't think that zoning would allow the square footage for another building of this type 
on this site. And I, I don't have the math in front of me to know that answer. The, the only provision in the zoning is 155,000 square feet of retail mm -hmm. space on any one floor. Not for another But didn't, reason. doesn't this, doesn't all of these buildings, uh, you know, A through G or A through H, already meet the square footage, the maximum floor area ratio for the site? No, the, maybe for, for residential only. For residential only. You can have up to 155,000 well, like square feet. That doesn't, the retail doesn't matter. It's, it's, that, that's just a provision for retail. That's why I was looking at it. Because when we talked about this before, and we talked about the additional yeah, pad sites for right now we have square and then the square footage of the building for for g that full thing needed to be under a square footage because this building was this site was completely maxed out and this team worked to get the square footage down underneath that so my point is unless the, the only building that they could put back here would be to, you know, you'd have to demolish something else to put something else in its place. Well, you definitely have to demolish. Yeah, the yeah. Janet, the Jared, oh, yeah. and the Panera yeah. Bread. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I said yes. The Jared Jewelers and the Panera Bread. But then a building could only go back with a floor size of the same footprint because you're at the max capacity for the site. So no building bigger than Building E could go back. And again, mm -hmm. right? It couldn't take up part foot. of the parking. What? It couldn't have a bigger footprint no. into the parking. No, because they're at max capacity. And, and is your architect still here? Is that, am I accurate in, in, in I, that? I can't answer that question. You, you can't, okay. So you didn't do like a floor area ratio study of this full site? He needs site. to come to the microphone. Please. Yes. No, sir, we did not do a floor, uh, floor area ratio on this project. Okay. I can't, I can't answer your question. Um, Okay, because because that that is a problem. I I think that the site, um, I think the site development as it currently stands, blocks the ability for a larger building to be added at the corner of Moreland and Park. But nothing precludes you from, you know, fifty years from now, demolishing E and F and putting a building back. So why can't we? Put specific yeah, language in the in the text amendment that says that. I don't understand. That's how how we got the Wawa with gas stations near the creek. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, as the board is well aware, the more specific you make it, the closer it gets to spot zoning. Um, we've tried to do try to avoid that, and the county certainly uh, uh, agrees with that. But all we do is fall back on the existing zoning. Could we request that? Bonus provisions can only be applied to one. Yes, that's where I'm at. I, I well, don't have it at a time. You probably can't do that through zoning because you're going to get the spot zoning issue. I had a converse when I heard some of these concerns. Mr. Balmore from my office called Mr. Garrity uh, this afternoon and brought and again this was last minute, right? But brought up the idea of a deed restriction or something related to that on that parcel, but no, nothing's been flushed out yet, but that was that would be one possible way you could consider doing it. If you may remember uh, uh, when Mr. Regley was here, there was a deed restriction on Chipotle uh, that we later lifted. So that would be the similar kind of concept, but doing it through zoning being that specific is very difficult. Yeah, it's, it raises <laughs> almost the same problem, but I mean, there's other ways to there do it. There are other ways, yeah. There are other yeah. ways to do it. Um, can I have one second? Yeah. Okay. What, what, what I was just talking about is if the board and Sean want to amend the ordinance, we don't, uh, uh, you know, to add whatever language makes you more comfortable, we don't have a problem with that and we will agree but I, you know, we won't charge in here with engineer plans to beat your rezoning or anything like that. We are a little concerned about timing because it's been, you know, a year and a half already. Um, and 
Uh, so, uh, and I, you but, never, I mean, you I never want to. We have a record, too. So. We have a record. So you never want to do this uh, on the fly, never the best no. way to do zoning whatsoever. But what we could do, and I'll give you time to think about it, Jim, or not think about it, we could do a couple things uh, with that. We could, uh, you know, go ahead with the rest of this hearing tonight, mm -hmm. get public comment, go through that. Uh, we could go ahead and close the hearing and then work on an amendment and that would still count or we can continue the hearing to a, you know a, a later date uh kind of you know you don't have to give me the answer right now or anything like that but what i was thinking sean yeah. is we haven't even started on the engineer drawings for this yeah. project let alone a new project at the corner of moreland and uh uh park and i, I don't i mean that would cost tens, there, so. tens of thousands of dollars and there's existing tenants with the exi existing leases I'll, I'll certainly agree to a, a you know a deed restriction uh, okay you know we'll promise not to come back in so then uh, so then so that you can amend your ordinance one person yeah I think we're <laughs> okay well uh, i think we're saying the same thing yeah so that you can amend your ordinance without interference from us and you know if, if you know if we in the future want to try to convince you that uh you know uh, the same size building is appropriate there 50 years from now then we'll have to convince you right i like that yeah is that agreeable so so yeah so then i think what we should do i'm just i don't get a like i don't like ad-libbing all of this <laughs> i think we should go through the rest of the hearing uh hear the public uh hear the public comment uh get clear guidance from the commissioners exactly what they want to do. I think we have understood that. Um, continue the hearing, right, to, uh, a, you know, the next Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, and then in the interim, myself and Mr. Garrity will work all of that out, hopefully have some agreement that we could address briefly on, not open a whole new hearing to do the whole new ball of wax again. Uh, but to talk about strictly that agreement and that narrowing, right. then potentially close the hearing and, and you know, uh, vote or whatever. Um, one second. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm sorry. To, right. I'm just trying to, yeah. We would, be, All right, we'll, we'll, we, we would be looking at a March vote. Okay, well, um, we have to talk to folks down in Washington, D.C. and Maryland ab about all this, but we can certainly finish the hearing. And yeah, if we go through the bulk of it and we can continue it, we give ourselves a little more flexibility. That's the only reason why I say that. So. Okay, and just so when you go back, the issue that we have on this whole property is another large-scale residential uh, building. That's understood. what we want to rule out. I understood, well, because we're asking for a height variance and the existing ordinance just, permits 65. I just, I just want to be clear about so everything above 65 feet or if in 20 years from now we had an as project that was limited to 65 feet would this new no. prohibition stand no, I can, can i make a comment exactly. oh, that's trying to explain. sorry that's exactly what, what call issue. If, if i what? if i may make one one interjected comment in here this project has always been designed under the assumption that you are going to receive approval for a 65 foot building and i think because we have so many people in the audience that i think it's important for us to note that our ordinance only states that a building of this size can be 45 feet and then receive a bonus provision for an additional 20 feet mm -hmm. right. so there's nothing here that says 65 feet is guaranteed period across oh, the no. board on this no you have to qualify for the and i, I just want to make sure that that's 100 percent understood because I've been opposed to the 65 feet since the get-go, and it's been a, a design of 65 feet since the get-go. But nothing says that you're guaranteed 65 feet anywhere on this site, regardless of prominent intersection or not. That's a bonus provision. So I just want to get that out of the way, because it's a, a very important clarification of our work. <laughs> um, it is so, important, because I don't think that's how it's been portrayed. Correct. It's been portrayed that it's by right 65 feet which no you not, have to no, qualify for the this but it does right. say 65 feet in the ordinance but you have to qualify qualify exactly yeah. and this didn't doesn't currently qualify not, not a by right 65 we feet we're trying to say correct exactly, exactly. correct, correct. Yeah. yeah absolutely okay. thank you okay with that, any other questions from the board oh, i have tons yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got tons um okay so uh first off 
thank you for all these these exhibits. We've worked really well together. There's been a lot of pushing and pulling from both teams. I think we've worked very well in I've, smacking I've, each I've other and smacking it, back, yes. and it's been really good. Um, so to note again, to, to clarify, you had that site section. I appreciate that. That's very helpful in seeing what's going on. The top of our township building spire is 63 feet. It's 70 feet. It was measured today. Yeah. I just took a scale. Okay, so that's even better then. Yeah. Because I took a scale. I took a scale uh, from this drawing, um, and the top of the spire said 60, 63. We had it met from the from the the sidewalk or from the. <laughs> Uh, from your grade level zero zero first floor, right, which is about showing. what we're showing, we're showing okay. somewhere between fifty six. Yeah, so it's like basically Park Avenue, right? Yep. I had the police department today put their drone up and measure it from the street uh, to the top of the spire, and it was seventy feet. Okay. Because I knew that question would come up. So then we okay. can raise it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this, the scale here. The scale of your township building is off then, um, and, and that's important to note yeah. uh, because people need to understand the scale of that uh, while they're on Park right, so Avenue. So 70 feet is the presumed height of the top of the spire. The top of our roof surface is 6088, and the top of our high parapet is 70 feet 2 inches. So we are 2 inches higher. Yeah, okay. No, and that's, that's good. Assuming, yeah. I said it was 55, it was my guess, yeah, but I was obviously quite wrong. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, As you're from the steps of the police station, you're probably dead nuts on. <laughs> yeah, right. So, for perspective, just so, so the, 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 the top of the uh, Marshalls and Grocer building, which are existing now, are 35 feet. In height. In height. They're also 10 to 15 feet lower in grade. Right. Uh, but, but if you're standing on the sidewalk. Yep. But, so that, just the perspective, so that's 35 feet single story high bay retail with the parapet. Yep. 35 feet. Understood. Understood. And and you know we we talked about rooftop units and masking rooftop units. And uh, honestly, if you're standing at the vision and you're looking down to the center of our township, you're going to see a ton of rooftop units on buildings that are much shorter. Anyway, correct. That's just the way that that's going to be. You can't mask those things. Um, however, those buildings are not massive, eighty-five foot tall walls facing um, the inner workings of the community. So um, I've made that very clear on multiple occasions. Um, it's, it's rather frightening to see that turned into the site, especially if we're opening up that site to the corner of East in that bend. Um, having an 80 foot, 85 foot tall uh, facade there is sort of what we're trying to get away from. Um, and so uh, I think I had requested it a couple times and I know that was short notice, but we did never see a rendering of from that perspective to make us feel more comfortable. Um, we show a close-up rendering from that perspective, but we do not see a rendering from Easton and Easton that gives us context. And all of my requests to date have always been, I'm for whatever you want to do, as long as they have context and we can judge it against itself. Because right now, all, well, I'm sorry, we can judge it against its neighbors. This is solely judged against itself. And when we look at it against itself, it's beautiful, it looks great, great project. But how does it fit into the fabric of, of our community and how does it work to create the engagement that you're trying to create? Uh, I want to make sure I understand where from behind retail age. Where do you want to see this the site section from? Yeah, so like around around the bend of Easton and Easton or more Memorial and York, right? right like there. You've talked multiple times about what it means to come from the train station yeah, and, and come to that site. And we're showing the perspective from about here. Is that you can see the very corner. you can see the very corner of that one building? Correct. So this view again, part of my. So you, you can see the, the corner of the building here, and then this is so that you're almost at the intersection of York and New York. You're sitting at the you're across the street. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, it's 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 big. It's a, yeah. <laughs> it's a very big front. Um, so all right, I stand corrected for the request, and I retract that, but. Uh, then my point stands that it's just a big building um, and it's a big wall when you come into into the township here um, okay so the other thing uh, the garage since we're on this now I understand it's strictly representational thank you for giving us these options this is an extremely important facade understood and it in my opinion it needs well thought out treatment that's not a kitschy pattern um, or uh, uh, 
surface treatment coloration that's going to be outdated rather quickly. Um, that's, that's huge because that's more prominent than that corner. Even though you don't have that, I know that a portion of it's blocked by the bank building. Um, not at that height. Not at that, exactly, exactly. This, this towers over that building. Charles, do you have anything to say? No. no. Dale? Sorry, I'm, I'm still not done. Uh, text amendments, and uh, Mr. Garrity, this might be for you. Um, we've, we've had a couple word snafus in the past, and I want to make sure that we're not going to fall on those again. Um, section 2, amendments to the code. For conditions when maximum heights of 65 feet and 85 feet are permitted for certain types. Is the word and truly what you want there? Yes. Okay. So it's strictly 65 feet and 85 feet. Yes, because that is a set. The section that is amended is a section that anticipates the bonus being granted, which is why it says 65 and 85. Okay. Um, section three, amendment to the code. Uh, you have C is located in a lot having an aggregate frontage of 850 feet or more. Do we want the word in? In or on? Oh, well, there's two that. different words. I don't want that biting us in the butt later. You guys can hash that out. <laughs> I mean, whatever Sean wants, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and then just, just for, I, I think we all might need a little bit of this. What makes section B3 stand out any differently than sections B1 or B2? Why is, why is section B3 being proposed? Because of 85 feet. And we had, DC1 and we had to put D in at the request of the county. Okay. All right. So this would be strictly for the 85 feet or yes. six stories yes sir okay. so what well, already says six floors i'm trying to copy your ordinance as much as i can understood okay okay all right now i'm done okay thank you so i i have said it in the past and uh i have seen parking garages that have faces with planners on front of them mm -hmm. I think that's desirable. I know you have proposed other things about, you know, these metal structures that fasten on the front of the building, but uh, the whole idea of a parking garage and vehicles, I like landscaping, but I do think something has to be done. Just on that side. If I can point out too. That, you, we will get other shots at this. Well, that's yeah. exactly what so, I, I was going to point I out. When they come in Not for that. the board, because you is, know it. But yeah, for this the is strictly this text amendment. So we will yeah. get there's more both a conditional use and a land development approval so there's two more bites okay sorry I, I i did have one more I'm, i apologize we were super quick uh the master plan if you can go to the the site plan how about this one uh one more the one that had the call outs for the green spaces i think it was page five there you go okay so mark you mentioned uh great work number one there's some very large green spaces throughout this this site um prominent corners Good activation, nice spaces where I can see people gathering. You mentioned there are 11. Uh, I think there's nine on our property, and then I include the two on the township side. Uh, okay, I just want to make that very clear, too, because Three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, there are nine on your property, 11, and then there are two, two that you assume Correct. are that you incorporated as part of your counts, but those are on township. So, the, just so to, our nine public spaces total over 30,000 square feet. Okay. Um, is, you know, almost two thirds of an acre of open space dedicated towards public events and plazas, landscaping, seating, cafe areas. Okay. All right. Yeah. And on the one at the top where there's four, I think there's public seating on three of the four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I just wanted to make that distinction clear because there's nine on your property and then two right. outside. Yeah. yeah. I know it's say nine, but I did say 11 because I didn't yeah. include those two. Right. Sorry. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. No problem. Okay. With that, I will open up to any public comment. If you want to comment, you'll come up, you'll get sworn in, uh, name, and address. And then you can give I'll your comment this on this. Mm -hmm. yeah, It'll be great. Thank you. 
Udo Marin, M A R O N O N four zero one Gray Horse Road. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> um, this is probably like beating a dead horse, but um, the garage is definitely an issue with me. Um, and one of the reasons that, uh, if you notice, the mass of that garage is probably comparable to the. Um, Self uh, garaging uh, down down in uh, down in the city of uh, Willow Grove, the uh, where you store Lord your personal goods. Uh, so you get a sense of the size. But I think that the issue here is that you have uh, very well developed apartments and, and retail space, and you come around the corner and you have a different vernacular, a very horizontal building. Uh, it's white. Uh, so it's going to really pop, which you know, garages generally are horizontally. And I understand the economics of building a garage and trying to keep it, you know, very economical because of, you know, it's, it sort of doesn't repay itself after <coughs> unless they're charging for the, for the parking spaces. Um, well, I guess what I would like to see is maybe more hard, uh, vertical elements on the building and not that, such a disparity of a white to a, uh, a brick car. And I think um, it's really inappropriate to try to, what I'm calling painting facade, because that's a maintenance issue. You know, t five, 10 years around, I'm going to get everything peeling off. And, um, you know, you're going to have to redo something else. And it's, it's really, really almost the center of the town. So you don't want to have that part of the, the, the downtown area itself. And that has been well on our list probably down about number five out of this whole project after five years uh we feel the same way uh just so everybody is aware of it the uh everybody knows about the building on the corner which is the old bank and the old legion uh they did try and buy that they would have wrapped it we would have never seen the garage but they were not able to buy that property uh, that that's what they would have liked to do so we didn't see it so we are we have that in discussions every single time we meet with them about that garage. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's a design issue. <coughs> building or no building, it's a design issue. Yes. Good evening. My, my name is Chris Ogg. No, there is, I mean, these are just public yeah. comments. They don't need to be sworn. No, exactly. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Not, my name not is Chris Auth. I live at 705 Burbridge Road. Okay. Chris Auth, A-U-T-H, 705 Burbridge. Okay. Uh, so I have a question and maybe a comment. Does this uh, project, the developers of this project, requesting any kind of tax abatement, like a 10-year tax abatement? No. No. No? Okay. Thank you. Brian. Brian. B-R-I-A-N. Shannon. S-H-A-N-N-O-N. S-H. S-H-A-N-N-O-N. 503 Quigley. Willow Grove, 19090. I just wanted to put a stake in the ground for counselor that uh, roof siting, uh, the APA specifically identified, all right, to federal, to go up Abbey View, turn around and look. And it was encouraged that we put some type of screening on the roof because of the vision from what I'll call the hill. All right, and uh, I just think it's important that we raise that issue back as it was identified. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just gonna say that we don't, we don't think there's gonna be much of a view compared to, as Anthony said, you know, every single building down there is visible. If, if the board wants a higher wall around the side you know that's just a height issue we can certainly do it i'm not sure it's going to help anybody i guess my statement to federal was hey it's a space age let's get creative there's different methodologies different technologies that are open to screening all right because it will be an issue and the sample that i brought up and i guess sam you'll be more familiar with it since you're one of the few that's around uh was when a home depot opened and we had the orange pumpkin visibility <laughs> from the hill and that raised a bit of concern 
that's why I brought the concern up there. Mm -hmm. Pumpkin has since been mitigated by giant, but guess what? It's still visible. Right. Yeah, anywhere on the hill, it's still a white roof with... Uh, well, it's better than the orange uh, stripe that was around. Yes, but you do see, you see any, yeah. any building down there. Um, you other correct. thing, if I may bring up, um, the original intent of TC1 right, was to bring the high-rise development in town keep it out of the residential districts. Uh, we created TC2 as a block. Um, and this is all nine years ago. It's been a long time since I've read what we wrote. But um, our intent wasn't to tell the landowner what he can or can't do with this property. Our intent was to create an environment for redevelopment and keep it out of the neighborhood which is why we specifically drew barriers around there. As my opinion to the board is, if they want to put a high rise on the corner of Moreland and Park Avenue, have at it as long as it fits in our zoning or come back for relief. All right, uh, we've seen that a number of times. So the focal point of TC1 was redevelopment and we definitely need the revenue with what's going on. We definitely need that revenue. Okay. Right. And people can't, the, the local residents can't keep shouldering the tax increases that are being handed to them. We've got to get some true rateables back up. All right, and that shopping center is one way to do it. Of course, federal will be paying the taxes, thank you. But <laughs> um, let's go with it, We, you know. Focus what TC1 was, not what you don't want it to be. Have a good evening. Thanks, Brian. Hey. Uh, yeah, I want to just piggyback on that a little bit, slightly. So it has been communicated constantly that, that people that live on the hill have been disappointed with what they see. I don't think you need to get higher provisions to screen it properly. You know, it's, like Brian said, get creative. Now, it was communicated several times that we want to know what the perspective is going to be from the hill. Didn't identify what the hill was to people that don't live here. So, my bad. And you, it was there. I saw okay. it. Just make sure you understand. We did. And we told them. My name is Adam Blum, Blum, Bravo, Lima, Uniform Mike. Sorry, Mel Jack. B is in boy, L is in Louisiana, using uniform, M is in Michael. Guy at 2529 uh, Horsham Road. Hi, everybody. My name is Adam, and I'm here because I'm happy to be an Upper Moreland resident. Um, and I am here enthusiastically to support constructing housing in our community, including the apartments in this Willow Grove redevelopment plan. <clears throat> building housing, just like building roads and schools, is an investment in our future. A great country is in the middle of a housing crisis, and the cost of housing have increased substantially in urban, suburban, and rural areas. Tonight, I support our Board of Commissioners in taking any action that will directly address our township's housing crisis. <coughs> there is a large amount of research showing how building more housing can reduce, or reduce rent or reduce the growth of housing costs. I encourage everyone here tonight to read a brief paper from UCLA uh, that summarizes some of the strong evidence showing increase, increasing the supply of housing reduces the cost of housing. The paper is entitled Research Roundup, the Effect of Market Rate Development on Neighborhood, on neighborhood Rents. Uh, I, know the, I know that improving more housing in Upper Moreland would not just benefit the people here today, but future generations as well. I thank you for your time listening to me, and thank you to the Board of Commissioners for volunteering their time to serve our community every day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blum. Yeah. Next. Uh, Virginia Quinn, 201 Everett Avenue. 201 Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to um, just make public comment. I'm on 201, so I'm at the top of the hill. And I look down, and when I come out my driveway and turn the corner to come into Will Grove, I see the white building top. 
and I see other tops of buildings, but I also see some some uh, church steeples and stuff, which is really nice to see. I really don't want to look down at a, a building. Um, I work in industry, and I know what tops of buildings look like uh, because of the industry I'm in. They have a lot of um, hardware on top of them, and I'd rather not see that from my view of my home. Also, um, I, I think a building like this would take away from the view of the center of Wool Grove. The center of Wool Grove, I've lived here um, for 59 years of my life, and the center of Wool Grove was always this building, the township building, and coming from that end of the, uh, from the Davisville area and driving up, it would, in you know, it would take away the, the view of the of the township building that I grew up as um, Center of Will Grove. I just think it'd be a nice, there's nicer ideas for the Center of Will Grove. And, and a building like this, and it's just my opinion, but in the center you have a courtyard, and that courtyard's not accessible to the rest of the Center of Will Grove, or the residents of Upper Moreland or Willow Grove. It's accessible to the people who pay rent and live in those buildings. So your green spaces are only a couple, and I think they're already Upper Moreland's green spaces. So I, I do have a little bit of um, a problem with the fact that that big green space in the middle of that picture isn't part of Upper Moreland, and it's not a, a park-like setting for any of us to use. It's just for those people. And it is. It's a monstrosity, and it's going to take, I feel it's going to take away from the view of Will Gro the center of Willow Grove. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to speak on this? Uh, Sean, are we leaving this open or are we closing? Uh, so I would meet, uh, I would suggest, and I just want to clarify with Matt, our next, our March meeting would be March 6th, uh, 2023. Sounds right. Yeah. So I would suggest you make a motion to continue the public hearing to March 6th at 7 p.m. at the Upper Moreland Township building. So moved. Uh, Mr. Garrity, you had a since we are finished, I would, I would um, ask Sean if we could leave it open for a specific purpose. Yeah, I think we should, would leave it open for a specific purpose on uh, any any presentations from the concerns from the public and the Board of Commissioners. And if we were to comment, we will try our best to limit it to that, to that uh, portion as much as possible. So moved. Okay. Everybody's all right with that motion? Yes. Yeah, Second. <laughs> You got a second. Wait, I'm sorry, do we identify what those issues are? Move. Are you just saying it's a motion? Well, record is what Sean said. Okay. Well, I think they were in the record, and I think the biggest one that I heard, and I'll talk to Mr. Garrity about, is essentially, um, you know, applying it to one parcel, what his client wants to do, uh, one building, what his client wants to do with that. And if his client was okay with that, what would he want to do legal? How we, legally is the best way to get there? The, the, the main issue that Cheryl had brought up that we all agreed on was the provisions would not carry over right, yeah. bonus provisions. to the bonus provisions to another yeah. building. Right. That, that's that's yes. really the main. 100%. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. With that. Uh, so there will be the motion to continue the public hearing to March 6th, 7 p.m. at the Township Building. Second. You have a second? Yeah. I'll make the motion then because I don't think John wants to do that. Well, Sam, this Sam already yeah, brought that. Seconded it. And I, uh, motion I, to continue the hearing. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Against? Okay. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have presentation uh, Woodlawn Master Can Plan I? update. Uh, what? Yes, please. Money. be helpful. Okay. Yeah, well, he's going to get it to both of us. Okay. Hey, Jim. Nice job. Yeah, I'm going to. Thank you. Yeah, let's go Hey, Charles. Yes, I know that, but that's you know, uh, for a no, oh, yeah, these are all things got thrown. Oh, now I messed up. All right. What's it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did some bookmarks. This is easy for me. I mean, I know it's. Right. No, I hear you. I went through the whole thing. It's been hard to get used to that. I'm like glad to show big. I keep the 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and one that could serve the needs of the township and the community for a lot of years to come. Mm. So our draft plan, uh, we came back with a few months ago. Uh, we got comments on that. And, and then based on those comments, we made some revisions, mainly in the left side of the plan here on the Woodland Ave side, you can see uh, the circulation changes. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Sarah, who's gonna walk you through the plan uh, and go through all the proposed elements. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is the overall plan. I'm gonna go through each element and then we're gonna zoom into each part and kind of go into the detail of the different parts. Um, but just to kind of orient everybody, um, we are, this is Division Ave at the top of the page, Woodlawn Ave here, and then you see forest kind of squirts around here. Um, at number one, we have what we're proposing as a neighborhood recreation center. Um, two is the supporting parking area for that center. So we have um, 50, six spaces plus some um, four ADA spaces, so 60 altogether there. Um, at number three, we kind of have a courtyard that works for both the recreation center, but also for the park. Um, moving over to four, to the back of that recreation center, we have a stage area um, with a community lawn at number five. Um, kind of in that darker green area is a volleyball court that could be set up in the middle of the lawn. Um, at number six, we have our playground area um, with seven would be a picnic pavilion. Um, at number eight, we're looking at a splash pad. So this would be a zero depth um, water feature. Um, coming up to number nine would be multi-purpose courts. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, 10 is a plaza kind of sitting area adjacent to those courts with maybe game tables and some shade. Um, looking at number 11 is a sledding hill. So we do have topography across the whole site. So here we have about 10 feet and change from this walkway down to this walkway. Um, 12 would be a 70 foot baseball field. Um, looking at 13 is an outdoor fitness area. Um, since we have fitness equipment, 14 is in the location of the USGS marker. So this would be a plaza that would reset that marker at the same elevation, but kind of make it easier to understand the history of the USGS marker. Um, 15, we're looking at kind of a perimeter walking trail um, around the various levels. And then at 16, um, this is moving up onto the road. So at Division Ave, we're looking at some tabled crosswalks along Division Ave to help calm traffic in the area there. And then at 17, we have our connection down to Forest Ave. Um, so as we move forward, we wanted to focus in on kind of the traffic calming improvements that we're looking at first in the plan. Um, the majority of these are being implemented or recommended along Division Ave. Um, so what we're looking at here, um, you're kind of seeing at each intersection, we're extending the curb line at the intersections to make a more narrow crosswalk. Um, and it also defines your on-street parking that currently exists on Division Ave. Um, and then at Abbey View, Everett, and Forest, we're tabling those crosswalks. So that puts the pedestrian up at the level of the um, existing sidewalk. So cars coming down would have to slow down to cross those tables. They are designed to the speed of the road, which is, I believe, 25 here, um, so that you could drive across them at 25 miles per hour without um, bottom, bottoming out as you were to drive. Um, with the table crosswalks, we're also proposing head-in parking. Um, so we're cutting into the park to do that. Um, so you're seeing these parking spaces in these area, and then a new sidewalk along that head-in parking that would become your main entrance into the park. We're also showing a fence line with new shade tree planting at number five that would parallel that walkway. Um, we're also looking at a tabled crosswalk at the intersection of Silver and Woodlawn Ave. Um, so again, to help control um, that intersection and then looking at improved crosswalk improvements at the intersection of Woodlawn and Division. So these would all be at grade crosswalks at this intersection. Um, again, with all these traffic recommendations, these are just conceptual. Um, any improvements would be done through coordination with the township engineer and any um, further engineering to make sure that they're all viable. Um, so just to kind of look at what that table cross would walk would look like, um, here we have an existing section through Division Ave. So this is your residence on um, opposite the park, our existing sidewalk, 
the Division Ave is 30 feet wide, so you have your parallel parking, and then your two traffic lanes, and then your sidewalk here is really wide along the park. It's about eight feet wide, fence, and then you're in the park. Um, so what we looked at is, you know, you have your existing on-street parking. We're going to maintain that existing on-street parking, but we're going to bump out the curb at the sidewalk crossing. So then that sidewalk is the same height all the way across the road, right? In terms of the cartway, the cartway can stay 20 feet wide. Um, we might want to explore looking at a slightly reduced width than that to 18 feet. So that still is a nine foot wide lane, which is totally acceptable on any sort of local road. But that will help calm traffic even more if you kind of narrow it down just a little bit. Um, so that's something that can be explored as we move further along. Um, and then the other thing that this really does is it starts to create a transition zone between active traffic and your park itself. So right now, the only thing you have is your sidewalk and a fence that kind of creates that transition zone. Moving forward, you see how that zone starts to expand significantly because you have that head-in parking, um, the extension of the sidewalk, your new sidewalk, and then kind of that transition into the park and your fence line. So you really start to define that space between the road and the park. Okay, moving into the park, we're gonna look at the lower plateau first. And this is where a lot of activity is going on. Um, so we're gonna kind of go through this one by one. First, we have kind of our pedestrian entrances into the park. So from Woodlawn and Division, we are proposing a staircase. And then the very first kind of level area of the park is that open lawn that used to be in front of the school. So having a walkway that comes up along there, and then another staircase that would bring you over into the entrance of the Neighborhood Recreation Center or continuing over to the playground and pavilion area. Um, that was one of the changes we've made where we originally had the walkway coming straight up into the parking. We've kind of turned that and elongated the walk. Um, looking at the playground area, and I'm going to go a little out of order of the numbers, but just kind of talk you through it. Um, we are looking at that pavilion area. So this would be an open air pavilion for picnics. Um, looking at a swing area, and then two play zones, one for five to 12 year olds, and then one for um, under five year olds, so kind of preschool age. Um, so each of those zones. And then also kind of looking at manipulating the landform and kind of developing a landslide here, so, um, or a hillside slide. So the idea is maybe that becomes the little Fraser Hill within the playground area, kind of referencing the historical name of the park itself. Um, from Silver and Woodlawn Ave, we are proposing a walkway. This would be an accessible walkway into the park. So the grade is less than 8%, um, bringing you up into the back of the building area. We have that open lawn. We're looking at a synthetic turf event lawn. And then adjacent to that would be the splash play area and then your stage on the back of the building. Um, the walkway kind of continues up. So this becomes kind of the first plateau. That walkway would wrap around the back and um, again, be accessible up to the upper plateau, kind of two different ways there. Um, and that's where in between here is where you start to get that sledding hill. I'm looking to propose a lot of trees um, within that sitting area, as well as the playground and buffering and adding a lot of trees within the parking lot itself as well. Um, within the parking lot area, we do have the access into that parking lot as opposite Abbey View. Um, we would propose a vehicular gate here so that the park can be closed um, after hours, um, bringing you into the parking area with our ADA parking, um, walkway access to the front door, and then also a drop-off area with direct access to the front door as well. Looking at the Neighborhood Recreation Center, um, so this is really just conceptual studies. Um, this is by no means meant to be a final product. Um, but just looking at the program items that were kind of explored that we felt were viable on a site this size. So we're looking at a single gymnasium with two community rooms and restrooms that function for both the park and the building itself. So these are kind of the ideas. So this is kind of looking at that entry. So this would relate to the roadway parking area drop off right here. Um, again, this is if you're standing kind of at that drop off looking towards the building. And then this is if in, you're in the back of the park. This is kind of the back facade of the gym and the stage area. And one thing with the location of the building, um, kind of putting it at an angle so you're not seeing one direct facade from any roadway. You're kind of always looking at it at an angle to help um, with the sizing and scale of that building. 
Um, so what you see in the building, again, um, driveway drop off, walking into a lobby, um, having a community room that relates to that outdoor courtyard area, um, offices um, for staff, as well as restrooms, and then kind of coming into that open gymnasium area, um, and then back out onto the lawn itself. Um, on this side here would be a park accessible restroom, so that relates directly to the playground area. Um, and then when you look at the second floor, again, having support space, um, lobby on the second floor, community room, and then this would be opened up to your gymnasium, so that gymnasium has clear headroom for sports. Moving up to the middle plateau, um, here again, looking at an accessible walkway um, connection from Division Ave into the court area. Um, looking at the idea of two basketball courts, um, we also kind of overlaid on this a modified um, street hockey court um, so that the idea is that this area would work for multiple sports and not just serve basketball. Um, it is kind of set into the hillside, so we do have a retaining wall at number five. Um, it kind of starts as a seat wall and goes up to a retaining wall where this is holding back the most amount of grade. Um, the idea is against that to have a tennis practice wall. Um, we do have a stairway connection that brings you down into that kind of courtyard and then also kind of a stairway connection down into the building area. We see this one as a really neat gathering place where it's kind of in the open but around a lot of activity where people can kind of gather on the steps. Um, maybe there's some game tables up in the plaza um, for people that don't want to play active sports but want to be kind of part of the activity. Um, looking at the very upper plateau, um, we're maintaining um, baseball at this location, but looking at a 70-foot field. Um, the 90-foot field does not make kind of current standards for sizing. Um, we feel that a 70-foot field is a lot more appropriate in this park. Um, and working with Pat have identified that there is a need for more 70-foot fields in the township. And there are places within the township where 90-foot fields could be improved so that they're more usable. So that was the thought and why we're looking at a 70-foot field here as opposed to a 90-foot field. Um, with that field, we are looking at um, team benches and, pedestri or, and <laughs> spectator seating that would be covered and shaded, as well as getting a lot of tree canopy in and around those gathering spots. Um, again, looking at Number five, or six, I'm sorry, would be that outdoor fitness area. So this is a mix of maybe stationary and um, movable fitness equipment, maybe geared more at seniors, but also kind of picking up adult activities in that area as well. Um, the USGS marker entry plaza we kind of talked about, that becomes a main entrance point into the park. Um, from there, you can kind of go into the loop trail that rings the various plateaus of the park. Um, Again, in this area, we really start to get into buffering. Um, we do have some buffering down in the lower plateau that I didn't really talk about, so I apologize. Um, but the intent is kind of have that buffer along the residential um, properties. So what we're kind of showing here is conceptual in terms of maybe having some low meadow areas, um, but also mixing in a mix of evergreen and deciduous tree material as well as ornamental trees. Um, but with that, making sure that we maintain a mow strip along the neighboring fences so that um, if neighbors want to, they do have a way to kind of get in to the park from their yards. If they have a gate, um, there would be kind of mowed walking paths to bring them into the park. Um, last, kind of looking down at that connection into Forest Ave. We'll look at that a little more in detail. Um, but also looking at ideas of stormwater. So again, the plan addresses stormwater very conceptually. We know we want to celebrate stormwater and have it be visible in the park in terms of how we're dealing with it. So we do propose some surface treatments, but there'll probably be a lot of underground storage treatments as well um, to address stormwater. And that all gets based on testing, soil testing during design and construction. And so our thought is, you know, we will include some surface stormwater, um, rain garden type features, um, but maybe under kind of the synthetic turf, that might be a storage basin for stormwater as well. Um, looking at Forest Ave, we'll just kind of add to that. We do have an ADA connection, so we're improving a walkway that connects directly to the Forest Ave. And then here, having kind of a gateway feature um, right as we transition from the park into the easement 
um, which is the walkway between the two ho private homes. Um, but having kind of some special paving there, maybe brick pavers or stamped colored concrete. So it really denotes that it's a public entrance. So if you're standing on forest, you kind of see that gateway at the end um, and you're kind of invited to walk along that way. Um, so with that, we're going to um, open up to see if there's any clarifying questions from the commissioners on the plan. Um, and then I'll hand over to Pete about, well, we do have a section to go over costs, but I just wanted to see if there are any questions first before I hand off to Pete. I'd just like to make a comment, commissioners, before, before you ask your questions on, on what you've seen. There were over 500, I think, survey results, mm -hmm. surveys that were taken, and we have results of those. We did meet with the youth groups, teen groups, and other interested focus groups, and all of the information you see, all of it was gleaned from all of those meetings and all of the community input. Um, everything in this process, uh, I believe, was on our website each time, and, and we've tried to be as transparent and open as possible and accept all comments. We didn't agree with all comments. We didn't implement all comments. All comments were heard, thought through by the steering committee, and responded to. And I think what you're seeing before you is the, uh, the hard work of the steering committee to present something that may have someone, something for everyone, not necessarily everything for someone. So uh, with that, I will happily take your questions. OK, first, uh, this board and myself, uh, I would like to thank Simone and Collins for the way they handled this. They did a great job. Uh, in their meetings, kept them timely, and still got all the information. They did a, a very, very good job in uh, this whole process. Also, the steering committee, I want to say thank you. I, I didn't even know the names. I picked by areas uh, and different groups uh, is how we picked them. We tried to stay out of this and let the public actually help design this. Uh, so we were not really involved with this at all. Uh, so thank you to that committee also for your time uh, in uh, showing up at almost every, you know, you're all there, all the meetings and stuff. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, so uh, with that, just so everybody's aware, this is, uh, like they said, a plan. We don't have the money to do all of this. And we already know we have a couple locations we could put a, uh, a recreation center. So just because we're going to uh, look at this, this does not mean that those trees are going there, the building's going exactly right there. Uh, this is a concept that we will be able to look at. We do have money to do some of this. And uh, so the money that we're hoping is used for match money to grants. Uh, so we get even more money to complete more of this because what I understand is this is like a five million dollar project uh, I think we probably in our budget might have a million left uh, for this so uh, with Mac using that money for matches and stuff we will be able to do a portion of this uh, pretty quickly uh, as far as I think so uh, as, as quickly as a municipality moves. Uh, with that, I'll open up any questions from the board on this whole project. I don't have a question, but I, I also want to uh, uh, thank my neighbors uh, who were on the steering committee and those who weren't. Uh, good little teary here. <laughs> I've been. Uh, hoping for this uh, since I moved here in 1989. Uh, and uh, make a long story sh short, uh, this is kind of fulfilling for me. So thank you. Um, I, I want to echo Commissioner Skull's comments that this truly was a community event and it's been a long time waiting. And it's just to watch that building come down is a, is a reason to celebrate. But it's, it's great to see a full room. You know, a, a lot of people come out to bitch and moan about a lot of things, but this is a, a really good reason to come out. And I want to thank the entire community for input on this. Uh, I do have a couple questions about adequacy of parking if we have a full day event. Yes, so we've addressed parking in two ways. Um, one is through the internal parking lot, and this is significant, or sig sorry, the appropriate parking to meet the floor square footage of the building. 
Um, and then we also have the additional parking on division, which so if you have an activity going on in the building and you have a game, that starts to address both those needs. So just a regular day in the park without maybe a game going on, no major community event happening in the building, you have plenty of parking to meet demand of just the park, someone going to the playground, someone renting a pavilion. May I jump on that question? Yes. Yeah. Since we're on the parking concept. Right. Um, was parking explore, was parallel parking explored along Woodlawn Avenue? We did. We looked at a couple of concepts for Woodlawn Ave. We looked at, well, there is existing parallel parking for one thing. So we're not recommending removing or adding to that. That parking stays as is because it is a good traffic calming device on Woodlawn Ave. Um, we explored the idea of angled parking into the park along Woodlawn Ave and that was not very popular. So we looked at the idea that maybe you could do a one-way street, have angle parking. Um, the more you start to cut into the park at Woodlawn Ave, you're starting to cut into the grades. So then you get into building a wall, which we wanted to avoid. We didn't want to start having to build a wall just to get parking in down there. So in general, with kind of the neighbors along Woodlawn, parking was not really a popular option down there. So that's something we kind of veered away with. We feel like we have significant, I mean, we're adding 84 spaces in all. We feel like that's significant and can meet the demands of the park. Um, what's the, uh, the footprint of the uh, conceptual building? Uh, 15,000 square feet. So that includes all the support space and everything. Uh, no, not right now. Uh, oh, yeah. So if we don't have questions on the design right now, I can take you through the bad news. Sorry, I, I do have one thing. To, to Which is the cost. The, no. okay. Um, okay. My, my only comment was th this site has uh, some severe grade changes, and I appreciate all of your uh, attention to detail for ADA accessibility. Um, as we develop this plan further and it changes and things, I just really want to keep that in mind because I heard a lot about stairs, and when you look at sort of portions of the, of the site, um, there are some areas that are not fully accessible from everywhere else. There are ways to get there, of course, um, but there are some circuitous ways to get to certain portions of the park. Um, so I, I know that that's on the top of your minds as well as you're looking at, at, at this, especially with the grade, and, and as we continue to develop it, let's pay attention to those things. Uh, I have one more question. We, we talked about the, uh, the, the tables at the intersections and how you uh, um, reduce the opening what, what is the openings that we see there at the crosswalks is that 18 feet is that 20 feet right now the cartway is 30 feet wide with parking on both sides right. so, when you so, so we're not really reducing the width of the driving cartway um, it can be maintained at 20 and our suggestion is maybe you look at 18 to calm traffic more because one of the first things we heard from all the neighbors was they're very concerned with speeding along Division Ave, and we understand that. So um, we're not reducing capacity or volume or anything. What we're doing is slowing traffic through physically and visually making the roadway I that. seem narrower. I got that. And, and I understand, you know, the, uh, the traffic calming devices that you employed here. Um, so when you show the width of the bump outs at the intersections of Everett, the intersection of Overlook. Uh, what, or what's an extra? They're between 20 and 18 feet. Okay, that's the question. Okay, thanks. Okay, with that, you can open up any. Well, I, I still have more of the presentation to go through because this is a very important part, um, even though it's not good news. So we, we've done very detailed cost estimates, which you've seen, commissioners, and as the report gets released, the public can see. And, and so the, all the park elements, and there are a number of ways to uh, mix and match these numbers. So uh, all the park elements you see are about $4 million uh, in terms of total cost. Um, when you look at the street calming on the two streets, we're at about $400 plus thousand dollars. Um, and then if you look at a building, a neighborhood recreation building at 15,000 square feet, we're at about uh, $5.3 million. Now, 
we're going to talk about this some more too. If we look at how the park could be addressed, there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, on the left there, you see everything in one number. So it's a ten, if you did everything on the plan, it's a ten and a half million dollar number. Most likely, you will not do everything on the plan. If you look at phase one park improvements um, on the on the left, we're at about um, uh, three three point nine million for all the park improvements with with not the big building. Okay, um, part of the um, trade-off for doing a 70-foot field was to improve Mason Mills field, the 90-foot field with artificial turf, because that would make that field much more serviceable on more times of the day. You've got facilities there for parking and lighting. So we work working with Pat, we came up with that and we thought that made a lot of sense. And then this number, uh, if, if um, you do, don't do a building ever on the site, and that's not a decision you need to make in the near future. Um, and, and if you don't do a building, we are proposing a small pavilion with a restroom and a, a spray pad. Um, so the park could go up to five and a half million. But those are decisions you will make going forward. They don't have to be decisions. This master plan is a planning tool. It doesn't commit you to do what's in this plan. But we want it to be aspirational. So in terms of how those numbers break down, uh, that 3.9 to $5 million number for the park is everything you see outlined in yellow here. And then the area in, outlined in red would be the building improvements if you decide to build a, 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 a recreation building here with the associated parking. So those numbers are divided uh, in a way that's easy, I think, when you look at the full report to understand. And then if you don't ever build a building, we would still recommend building some parking, which you see as number one there, that um, where the building is uh, and where most of the parking is is number three. That becomes green space. That could be of informal uh, play space or just an informal field area. Uh, so there are a number of ways to slice and dice this depending on what you determine your budget is. And I know you have options now to look at a community center or a neighborhood center in other places in the township. And we've talked at length with Pat and Matt about the idea that moving forward, you might consider doing a feasibility study for a community center or a recreation center. When we did your comprehensive plan 20 years ago, this was an issue. It's still an issue. It's one that many communities take a long time to deal with because it's an expensive item. So certainly you, you, you want to be thoughtful about that, which I know you are. Uh, in terms of moving forward, uh, the plan right now, the, this plan is on the website. Our understanding is after tonight's meeting, the full report will be placed on the website so that everybody can read it and go through it, give us comments. Um, we hope that after that period is over and there's no rush, it can, you can take as long as you need that the steering committee would make a recommendation for approval of the plan to the Board of Commissioners. And then we think, and you know, that to be successful with grants, you have to be aggressive and you have to do it often. There's a grant round coming up for DCNR on April 4th. Uh, there's another, which, which under the Land and Water Conservation Fund, if you have a match, you could get as much as a million dollars. And we've successfully written grants for some of your competing municipalities, places like Tradifferent and Whitpin, where we've gotten a million dollars from the Land and Water Conservation Fund because they had a match. So it's very doable. DCED, you can, you can get up to 250,000. So um, there, there are ways that you can get substantial amounts of money here. Montgomery County is another fund, which I sure, I'm sure you know about. So we, th we think um, uh, with persistence and, and patience, you can be very successful with uh, how you leverage your money with grant money. So that's really an overview. Those are some of the numbers which you can look at in more detail. And uh, we can certainly try to answer any questions. Any questions uh, directed uh, towards Simone and Collins from the? Come up to the Mark. microphone, please. Oh, I got to come up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I guess they don't want my name either. Uh, my name's Dave Ferlaney, and I live on Schoolhouse Lane. I guess my only question is, we saw the, the sticker shock of the $10 million putting all this up. Generally speaking, 
ongoing cost of a rec center like that, what are we talking about per year? Annualized cost of maintaining, I'm assuming there's gonna be a staff in there, heating, air conditioning, graffiti cleanup. Hopefully not. <laughs> That's, that's that's my biggest concern with a rec center. But I, I just be curious. You know, we see the ten million. What's this going to add every year uh, to our budget in the township, especially for the rec center? And that's something we don't know yet. That's why we're looking at all this. Okay, <laughs> very good. Well, thank you. That's a good question, though. Thank you very much for that. Any other questions to Smoney Collins? Come on up. Yes. <laughs> off the corner of Woodlawn and Division Walk that comes up to building 70, the play area. Mm -hmm. What is that going to be? What is your so, proposed? You have to use the mic. So everybody hear it. So asking about the grade as you transition from Woodlawn up to the playground area. So what happens here is we have, you know, you have the intersection kind of node right here where all the crosswalks are coming off. If you come down the sidewalk, we have a staircase from here to here. So that brings you up about six feet. And then this is all level along that ex existing walkway. Um, and then again, coming up here, you're going up about another six feet, two staircases to get you up to here. And then this kind of comes up to meet grade at playground. So the playground actually sits lower than the building. Okay, so now you've kind of answered a question <clears throat> and I had it was, is this all in the whole area 100% wheelchair accessible? for anybody that's handicapped, meaning people that are coming up off the street or anybody that's coming in from a parked car in area two. Okay, so a parked car in area two, I'm trying to, f okay. So from area two, you are completely accessible. You have a walkway that comes down here that would be accessible. Um, you have a walkway down here that's accessible. Um, is it level or is there considerable? It would be, it would be ranging from five to 8% depending on which route you're taking. Um, coming from Woodlawn Ave, you know, we're dealing, the reason why we're proposing stairs here is because the sidewalk is actually at such an extreme slope it is. that if you're, if you have a mobility issue, but you're not in a wheelchair, let's say, let's just say you have a harder time negotiating or let's say you have a hard time breathing, steps actually become an easier way to transition a steep grade than a steep, I know, so well, let me finish. So that's why we're proposing steps here is to give you a way to easily walk in. If you're, from, if you're coming from a wheelchair, woodlawn, sidewalk, this becomes your accessible route into. It's without doing a, a, a pretty extreme switchback ramp that would then start to affect some of the trees there that we're really trying to preserve, mainly those beaches. You're not really going to create an ADA access from here but into a, the park. Would a switchback be considered? Can, can I also state that, so that's an excellent point and I, that, was, that was my concern about ADA accessibility, um, but to the point that was expressed, you, if you are on division, you also have accessibility at where that eight is, uh, at the corner of Abbey View, mm -hmm. right? Because that corner there is all flat coming in. Yeah. Or within ADA accessible grade. I'm talking about something that's living down on Cruisin or yeah. Inman or whatever. Sure, and and that that issue becomes the the same accessible route that you would take currently coming up to the park, where you would come along Division and you would go to that first table at Abbey View, and that would be your accessible entry on that northern portion of the site, correct? Yeah, or you would, if you were coming from this area, you would come down Woodlawn, and that would be an accessible route in. I mean, there's really, it's very difficult to create because you're dealing with about 15 feet of grade change between Woodlawn and the parking lot area. Yeah, yeah. We, we deal with ADA regulations all the time. Yeah. And if you read the law, uh, it says we're feasible. Uh, it's not feasible to make every point in this park from one point to another totally accessible to a wheelchair from one point to another. It doesn't mean to say this park is not almost totally handicap accessible. Uh, for example, that side, the sidewalk along Division Ave, 
uh, nobody's going to come in and tell you you have to make put a switchback on that sidewalk because that's basically what what the question is. Do you have to make every point accessible? Um, the other the other point is we worked here within um, uh, accessibility guidelines. If it's under five percent, it's handicap accessible. If it's an outdoor trail, Federal Highway Administration lets you go up to eight percent for two hundred feet until you have a landing. So we've gone through all those standards. Um, you know, could you physically uh, put a switchback route in at the corner, as this gentleman is suggesting? Absolutely. Would it be a good thing to do? Probably not, because you're going to destroy that part of the site. So there are, there are, there are again, the, the, the ADA law is written specifically a little vague to give you flexibility to do that. Can you go to find, I mean, as I said, this plan is very detailed, it's conceptual. We went through conceptual grading. We, we know this works. We've done pl plenty of plans like this. Um, when you go to final engineering, if you make the decision, you want to totally mess up that corner and put a switch back in, go for it. But we wouldn't recommend it at this point just because it's going to really destroy that part of the site. And we don't think it's necessary to give the park really excellent AD accessibility. One of the exhibits you have in your plan and when you look at it, um, when you look at the booklet, we have an ADA accessible plan in that booklet. It shows because DCNR, we did this even though this plan wasn't funded by DCNR, we did it to DCNR standards because that's one of the number one things they look at, ADA accessibility. And we're totally confident that DCNR is going to be very happy with the accessibility for this park. So that's, I mean, it's, that's a very long answer to a simple question. I want to add something to what you said uh, about accessibility from like cruising or inman so if you're wheelchair and, and and you can get there from inman and cruising getting getting to the park from inman and cruising is a bigger challenge than getting from the corner of woodlawn and division to the park itself it's, a, it's another long run because you're going down the full length of the 200 300 block of woodlawn just to get up to the park what, what i'm saying you you can still use the sidewalk it's there now, it coming is. up Woodlawn. And it's less of a grade than if you were coming from Inman up a wheelchair by itself. Maybe both ideas. It's forward. important to us. It's very important to right. us. And, and we, we do care. You folks, from the commissioners I'm referring to, weren't here when I brought this up before to uh, the architects. To be aware that division is used as a cut through a big cut through because people have gotten to know that do not live here that are trying to cut out the middle of Willow Grove will follow a route of either coming off of the area of Turwood and, and Davisville and grab either Ball or, or get right on Gray Horse and then follow Gray Horse through until they hit Division, then follow Division down to Moreland and either decide at the bottom to make a left or a right. Cutting out the complete center of Willow Grove is what their, I guess their idea is. And this happens at going both directions on rush hours, which are now more lengthy than ever. And I think putting in this street parking and in, and a special adjustment to the street isn't gonna, isn't gonna, gonna help at all. I think if anything, you're going to create a situation where you're going to have some accidents from people that are backing up out of those parking spots and somebody's still coming through there because they're cutting through our neighborhood that don't live here and they don't care all they care about is getting from point a to point b and not putting up with the hold up in the middle of the road i i respectfully disagree that all these things that are employed here the the um reducing the corners the the, the tables even the street parking, they are proven traffic calming devices. And if there's people that are going in and out, people that are uh, pedestrians going across the tables, all those things together will help. Um, you think uh, we it's are very actually, much. You think we, it's going to deter the people that don't live here that are using it as a cut through to abide by it? I think they're all going to these. I'm not saying they're going to help deter the cut through traffic. What I'm going to, what I'm saying is, it's going to. We, we know there's issues with cut through traffic. Every neighborhood in this township. It's not just here. 
You know, I live near the turnpike. I have cut through traffic for the turnpike. My dog got ran over by a car on a cut through traffic. Person lived in Ben Salem, getting off the turnpike in Willow Grove. Uh, it's, we, we're very much aware of that. These traffic common devices that are employed here, they're proven, they're, they're, they're taken out of a manual. They're proven in some situations, not all. So, so what do you think? You think that if we don't have those things, that we're, we're going to be able to reduce traffic? I think if we have 88 parking spaces, I think that's sufficient enough. I don't, I don't know why we need to have <coughs> more off the street. Uh, wait, can you repeat that? I don't understand the point. If we have 88 parking spaces, where? Yeah, if you have, if you have the, what, 84 parking spaces up at, oh. up at 60, why do you need more off the street? You just, that was the first question I the asked. The idea is not, the park is not here for us to bring people in from other communities. Well, it most certainly is. Most of it, no, it's not. It's, to, it's for the people that live here, the people that could walk from their house to get there. We don't need people from other communities coming in and, and, this community, and taking 70 over. This 70-foot baseball field, right? That That's, uh, every everybody in this community plays Little League, right? They, they need 70-foot bases. So they're going to come from where I live, uh, a Hapro mailing address, but I'm in Upper Moreland Township, you know, because my children or my grandchildren are playing on that, that, that baseball team. Maybe we don't need and, a baseball field. Do you think we get unwanted traffic at, at Mason Mill Park? Have you ever been there on a Saturday afternoon? It's 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 crowded. Right. Look, appreciate your comments very much. Neighborhood. Do you have anything else? That's okay. Thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate it. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Constantine Wozny, and I live about three blocks away from uh, Woodlawn. And I attended the public meetings. I wasn't on the steering committee or the focus groups, but I distinctly remember a meeting where they had the four different plans, and we were handed little green dots to put on the ones that were preferable to us. Now, let me start out by saying I'm not anti-baseball. But at my age, I'm not planning on being sliding into second base anytime soon. So um, I voted for the ones that did not include the baseball field, as did the majority of the people at the public meeting. Is it fair to assume that the steering committee and the focus groups kind of directed that to change from the public meeting uh, sort of preference? We haven't discussed this at all this board this is the first that this board's discussed this um i'm not sure oh it's the steering committee the yeah, he has the steering committee. the steering committee Ooh, this board hasn't talked to this i see or okay. anyone so you don't know the answer to my question but the, i guess my point was that at least at the public meetings the preference seemed to be overwhelming for the two concepts that did not include a baseball field so that was my comment. Uh, you know, I thought maybe someone could answer the question whether that was sort of voted. I, I can't. I can't tell you what. Right, you can't because but, you but don't have that. You this. I can tell you this: that we have a demand for fields, and we can't fulfill that demand every single year. We have to say no to teams to provide them fields because we don't have enough. And and uh, so the, the demand is there for for baseball fields township wide. Yeah, and, and, and we have an existing one there, uh, and, and this is a real need for the community. Thank but, you. Uh, I appreciate your question. Uh -huh. uh, let me ask you one thing, Constantine. Uh, you participate in other things in the town, so I appreciate that. What do you see here that you, uh, what concepts that you were looking for, like a walking path or other, what is something there that you perceived would be at the park that you don't see now? Uh, it's it's not a question. Like I said, I'm not anti-baseball. Uh, you know, it, no, no. the I, majority of people who have kids want a baseball field to exist. You know, I'm fine with that. It just seemed from the public meetings that's not what was wanted by the people who showed up. So, but, but you personally, you were putting your green pins or or your your on the concepts that you appreciated. I put the, my green pins on the ones that 
kind of had more trees, more open space, and not just fields. Uh, you know, I think, you know, a field like that is, first of all, it's only in use for a certain, you know, amount of time, a baseball field. Uh, you know, I thought a nice, you know, uh, forested area, you know, small area, play areas would be more preferable. As I said, you know, I, I don't have uh, kids uh, who would be playing baseball, so I guess perhaps I was being a little selfish and choosing what I wanted, you know, and I don't have a need for a baseball field. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your participation also. I, I think I can respond a little to the gentleman's question. So the neighbors, uh, there were four plans presented that night, and so. um, green dots were placed on different plans, and uh, I think predictably the neighbors most of the neighbors like most of the uh, unspoiled space. However, that was part of the process. Um, there were 500 and something surveys returned, there were focus groups meetings, there were talks with the youth groups, and all of that was considered in this. And, and that bring, brought up the question of, is this a neighborhood park or is this a community park? And the steering committee, myself and the consultants struggled with that answer. W what is this? It, and what it is, is it's part of an entire park system that Upper Moreland Townships offers to our residents. It has a neighborhood feel. The ball field certainly will invite some folks who don't live in the neighborhood to come and play baseball. Um, the 70 foot field was a high demand for uh, Little League. Um, and, I, and I agree, it's only used a portion of the time. So when it's not in use, it could become an, an, out, an, an outdoor space where you could practice soccer or throw Frisbee. Um, I do anticipate there being some fall soft baseball up here or softball as well. So I think it, it shows a mixed use of neighborhood folks who I think are going to visit this more than everybody else in Upper Moreland Township, but it also is part of our integrated park system to try to meet the need, needs of our community. And I'm, again, that's where I, I said I, I'm hoping it meets a lot of uh, what the folks were hoping for. Certainly is, is not going to meet everything that everybody wants. So a multi-use community center. Well, so a recreation building uh, could be bringing some folks into this area, depending on how it's programmed. Um, if Upper Moreland Parks and Rec is running it, just like we run, we used to run a summer playground at this site. We don't need more because we don't have indoor shelter. Uh, but that brought folks from the immediate area and, and outside of the immediate area. Um, so yeah, it, a community building, uh, a recreation building could bring some folks to that area that don't live in the neighborhood. Could also be something that the neighborhood uses quite frequently. Thank you. Hi, Diana Lineback. I just have a quick, first off, I, I like the plan. Um, I've heard it said a couple times at this meeting that you were looking at other places for a recreation center. You know, there's talk about maybe we wouldn't be able to afford it. That's the first time I've heard there being other places. I've kind of heard that there wasn't other places. So my question is, you know, what are those other places that was mentioned earlier? There's been some discussion in the last maybe 30 days if that of possible other places uh it, it's not something that we've been discussing or anything uh we just heard in the last we heard well some of us not even all of us probably in the last two weeks that there is a possibility of other places so that that's how new that is that that was not discussed is that by something us in that's the past. coming up for sale like is yeah. that why it's so recent no it, no it's a matter of i think Pat, uh, looking into areas that, uh, uh, that is a possibility. It might not be a possibility, but he's trying to find ways to get whatever he can for our park system. He, yeah, he has to play us as much as he can to get what he needs for all of his activities, because he is probably <laughs> one of the most active uh, people in this township as far as getting uh, things for people to do in this township. Thank you. I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we put all of our eggs in one basket, right? So there's yep. always there's there's always opportunity to look at things and and find other I'll just opportunities. I'll the biggest that. thing right now is the price tag for any building. Uh, uh, Pat doesn't have a ten million dollar check <laughs> yet. <laughs> As soon as he gets one, we'll find a building. <laughs> and I just, you know, a couple of opportunities uh, arisen in the last 30 to 40 days. Um, 
we're trying to see if there are realistic opportunities. They present serious challenges, um, and we're investigating what the potential could be for those and what are the constraints that might prohibit that. So we looked everywhere prior to this. <laughs> these these uh, this opportunity just came up very, very recently, so we're investigating. Be nice. <laughs> um, so I've been coming to a lot of the, almost all of the meetings except for one, um, and um, I've always talked about the same thing. Um, the I have a daughter with a disability, and we are the house right on Abbey View and Division on the corner, which seems to be where most of the traffic and the conge like is going to be because the. Um, now we always have issues on division with speeding. I mean, they think it's a, ra a racetrack there, but um, now Abbey View is also going to be, you know, high traffic because that's right at the entrance. So um, I'm just concerned about like the safety of the children th that live in that area. Um, and the other thing was, so I was talking about the you know, as the gentleman said about ADA, the ADA is very vague. Um, so that is why I attended all the meetings that I attended to make sure that I can be the voice for the special needs community. Um, because when you look at ADA, you think wheelchair accessible. Well, my daughter's not on a wheelchair. Um, so I was really sad to see, I know that it was talked about having the special focus groups, and I saw that they did. They had the elders, they had the teens, they had the children. Um, they did not have one for special needs. Um, so I think that's very important. And that was one of the main reasons I moved up to Upper Moreland was because of the school district um, and just being um, very inclusive. So I just want to remind you, as you said, the ADA is vague. So I, I feel that a special, um, special needs focus group for the parents that have children with special needs, where they can, um, you know, give their opinion would be would be fair, since <laughs> there's a bunch of other focus groups. Um, and then I just had a question. So the X, like right there on top of B, that would be like no parking at all, right? And then after it where, is that parking. Where is no parking? Or the where so the, so I'm the house like Abbey View and Division no. over there the X. over <laughs> this way no no to the right like right there in front of the big yeah, too many squares <laughs> use your right board. above the eight right above right the eight oh right eight I'm sorry yeah. okay so right there is there's the X right so that's like my window my where you know big giant the house is very old so it's like windows all over in the front. So I would have like a great view of, you know, I just want to make like see. So that's no parking there where that X is, right? Can I address that? Yeah. There's the X. So yes, the X represents where you would not have parallel street parking right because there is a driveway there and there's not enough room to have a parking spot between the driveway and the bump out. So that's why it's demarked, denoted as no parking. Okay. And then also, um, so there's also a handicap parking there. Is that going to remain there? So that's not something we were recommending to remove. That's This is kind of really conceptual just of how the parallel parking, but that if there needs to be an ADA parking spot through there, we can still maintain one through there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the next thing is, so a lot of the buses, the, the school buses that take the kids to Upper Moreland, that's like their main street. Almost everyone goes down that street and then just kind of, you know, um, goes off to the different areas. Um, would, and then I'm thinking like, okay, so the, reg the yellow school buses, you know, is that our bus is going to be coming for the events, for sports, where it's going to take up more mm -hmm. parking, more space. Um, and like, even now, my daughter gets a special, um, she gets special transportation. And the bus, like, sometimes we can't get in. The guy can't, like, get my daughter because there's cars already parking there, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to, like, it's, 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 it's already hard to control the traffic mm -hmm. there and the parking there and the speeding there. Like, I just want to make sure that the safety of all children is 
Yeah, I think better defining the on-street parking will help alleviate that issue of not having a space to pull up to load and unload um, from kind of specifically to the last comment you said. They could also kind of pull up to the bump outs as well where you can't park in front of the sidewalk anymore, right? So now that's a bump out that is only pedestrian. Um, sporting events are, to my knowledge, Parents bring their kids, they either walk or they drive. There's no busing to come to a sporting event here in terms of baseball. Um, we don't. We did not design for bus drop off for the community center. That was not intended at this site. Um, but it's not to say that you couldn't drop off a bus here. I, Pat, do you? Well, uh, I guess there, were, there are times when buses come currently to the 90-foot field because they use it as a JV okay. field. So maybe that's where that question came from. I, I, don't, I don't anticipate in, any busing going on here unless we're doing a community event if something were to come of the recreation building. Um, and then we'd have to take a look at it at that, at that point. Uh, while you're there, do you want to uh, comment on how much you strive for accessibility at all your playgrounds? We do, we do. And while we didn't have a focus group for ADA, as we go forward with this and develop this, we certainly want to take advantage of folks in the community that can assist us. But um, almost all of our all of our parks are accessible. Almost all of our equipment is accessible. Uh, we are not accessible in certain areas, and our insurance carrier reviews those for us. And when we don't meet the standard, they let us know, and, and we remedy that uh, quickly. Um, but I think certainly all of our playground structures the structures that we purchase are all ADA accessible. I've listened to you year after year after year, and, and he has made improvements at every park on a regular basis, and it is a very important factor. Yeah, and, and I want to take advantage of residents uh, who, can, who can help us. Um, and, you know, I think uh, accessibility takes many forms, and I'm, <laughs> um, you know, it could be a hearing impairment, it could be a sight impairment, it could be a, um, a, a, a walking impairment. So, you know, when we say ADA, everybody thinks wheelchair, and that's not the case. Hi, my name is Kim Ruby, Kim Thompson Ruby, you remember me? <laughs> that goes back all the way in the 60s in the park, the way. two of us. <laughs> Both went to Woodlawn School. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for this interesting plan. Um, I have grandchildren now and I would love to bring them here if they ever get here from Virginia Beach or California, that I would love to bring them to a place like this. I have a couple questions uh, and a clarification. Could I have a clarification? Um, my husband and I are leaders at Willow Grove Bible Church, directly across the street. Um, we have been trying to get to meetings, and I've had work travel every time that there was a meeting. So our input, this is our first time. Um, we understand with the bump out um, at Abbey View and Division, where um, uh, has just been expressed about the handicap parking for a uh, disabled daughter. Up a little bit forward, up the street at Division, we have an education wing at Willow Bible Church, and there is a bump out in the curb, and we only have that spot as access for accessibility to get into that wing. We have accessibility from our front door. We have, um, yeah, basically they can go in the upper level or the downstairs level, but we have this mid level. <coughs> Is there going to be an ability to have on street parking for those that need Which accessibility to, to this middle level uh, of the building? Yeah, I mean, again, final design engineering, all those little details can be worked out. We do still have on street parking a lot in that parallel parking on the north side there. So, so you, your question is, yes, it's a detail. It don't well, yeah, I wouldn't in? necessarily consider it a little detail. If it's, a little it's, detail. A, it's a detail uh, that can be worked out this very point. Oh, I heard the word we little. Just, I'm sorry. We just, we just can't, at this level, this is this is not a construction drawing. To the right. So your input is very important. Right there, that's a church. we can't take those yeah. things into consideration. If we didn't know about that, yeah. we want to thank you for letting us know. That's my so main that point. that can be taken account when you do the Yeah. Design. Could this, um, could that? Kim, you're talking about that space right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see the sidewalk. And then goes, that's yeah, the sidewalk. Yeah, exactly, right there. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, that's the only place that there is to park to get to that middle level. Is that currently the, the reason that there's a uh, handi uh, handicapped parking space wow. there? Yeah. There's, a, too. there's a bump out in the curb right there. Right, I understand that. Is there signage there? There is not a sign. No. And that we have, a, we have different phases we're going through to demarcate our accessibility. And that'll be the next piece that we need to do is to apply for a permit or paint the street or whatever it is that we need to do. You don't have to wait for this plan to do that. <laughs> oh, right. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question? When yeah. you say bump out, do you mean a depression in the curve? Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah. They're talking about bump outs as okay. coming out into okay. the street. Nope. So no, we're using uh, two different depression terms. in the curve. Okay. okay, thank curb you. Cuts. Curb cuts. Curb cuts. Curb cut. Thank you. I learned that. Um, this second question is about um, the uh, snow emergency route. Division is a snow emergency route. Will it remain that? As far as we know, there's no impediment this is to making a final plan. snow emergency by the concept. I, uh, yeah. Just so it makes you feel better. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, and I love the idea the, of the, the traffic slower down or things. I don't know what you call them, but I love that because, <laughs> oh, okay, so that's the bump out. Um, I love that idea because the traffic is despicable on division. Um, but we wanted to make sure if that was going to be changed from a snow emergency route because of the bump outs and emergency vehicles and all that, if that was going to affect anybody in, in that. Highly doubtful because that is the main way to uh, get to the top of the hill yeah. uh, and you can access it both ways. We did take away some of the other routes. That is That's pretty much a permanent route remain. to get okay. to the top of the hill. Okay. Um, and the fencing around if there is a baseball field, um, either backstop or on for the people who live on Forest Avenue on the other side, um, I think that should be considered not just trees some kind of screening. I mean, they've lived with that threat for their whole lives that they've been there, but it's, it's been a problem. And then if there is a concert stage, um, currently there's a noise ordinance for 10 p.m. Well, I guess that would still be a, a part of that. And um, right now we have a lot of problems with the park with after hours usage um, for illicit purposes. And I would like to make sure that that would be included in a plan that for staff. Mr. Stacy will handle that. Yeah. Uh, thank, you. thank you. There, there will be fencing around the field. Absolutely. Um, we in the plan when when you read it, which will be presented tomorrow online or on Wednesday. I'm I'm not sure if Vicky's in. Um, we do talk about security cameras and some other things in the park. In fact, we're looking at that at all of our parks. Some of them are uh, have security right now. Some don't. So that was certainly discussed with the steering committee and with the neighbors. Hi, I'm Sandy Kaufman. I live in Forest. I live right um, where the path is from Forest. Um, there's, I, I kind of not represent, I don't want to say represent, but there's a number of neighbors that we're close with um, that have a number of concerns. Um, I think throughout the process, we've, we've been able to vocalize most of them, um, but I just have some questions and some thoughts. Um, so one was, and I know the stormwater there, it's all conceptual, it's all ideas, but I'm noticing that there's a number of them that are directly against the property lines of Forest Ave. Um, right now, I know that like with the tennis courts, when they were put in, there's a significant increase to our basements and water and you know, resulting in a lot of money from the homeowners having to put into waterproof basements or somehow fix that. Um, when we are considering things for stormwater collections, that being considered with yeah. how it will affect the neighbors. First, first of all, we're taking the tennis court out, as you can see. I, I did so see that, yes. Less impervious there. <laughs> yeah. um, those, those beige or those ochre colored areas are not, not necessarily all BNPs or stormwater management. Because it's sort of at the high point, okay. right? So um, as Sarah mentioned, when you get into final design, um, you have to do uh, infiltration mm -hmm. testing because you not only have to, um, uh, you know, state law that no more water is currently coming off the property can come off in the future. We don't think that's going to be a problem. The other thing you have to do is you have to do quality enhancements, meaning you gotta not you don't make these big basins anymore to hold water, you actually percolate water through the soil to clean it to get into the aquifer. And so those things all have to be done in this plan. 
So we, we, we envision that the runoff situation from the site will be improved, not made worse. Okay. Awesome. And I would just add, the reason why you're seeing some on that southern side along the forest is because the trail system to grid that out so it's accessible kind of acts as a ridge. Okay. So we're... <laughs> we're ensuring that we're keeping the water on the property, right? Because it naturally wants to start to go towards the neighbors. So that's why you're seeing kind of those kind of land collection points where we're kind of guiding water to those points, okay. addressing it, keep moving it. So eventually it would discharge or infiltrate, as Pete said, um, to in a controlled way. Thank you. If, um, you, uh, if you went to the, uh, the chart that shows the costing, you'll see mobilization, ENS and stormwater allowances in every single category. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, I think as neighbors, we've had a lot of concern over the, the neighborhood center. Um, it's very exciting to hear that there's now consideration, as we've been told, somebody said, throughout the process, there was no consideration. There was no other option. So that's exciting for us. Um, if it were to be built here, I think there's a few concerns, especially with the stage in the back that is less than a football field away from our houses. Now, I know that there's going to be plantings and trees and b borders and all that, which A, take a very long time to grow, and B, just are not going to really cut back all those noise. And even with a 10 o'clock ordinance, I think that's being that close to the neighbors is, is a very large concern. Um, with the addition of that being a blind spot from Woodlawn and Division, there's, there's no direct line of sight. Um, like right now, the kids uh, are often on the, the, the playground, um, which same issue. We, there's no real direct line of sight because it's elevated, it's kind of tucked back. Even if you're looking here, there's, there's trees, there's, there's the pavilion, everything kind of prevents um, a line of sight. I know there's some talk about having um, cameras, but that would be a safety concern as well as a noise concern for us as well. One thing you don't see here is a lighting plan. Okay. You know, it's a, it's a daylight park. Okay. And uh, I, I haven't heard any... I, I, I get it, but it's, it's the same thing with the, the playground. There's, there's no lighting now. It's a daytime park, but there's still kids that are back there. And I feel like, especially if you're giving them a stage, <laughs> like, hey, let's hang out. You know, I work with kids. I'm a teacher. I get it. Um, you know, it, it's a very... I, I was a kid in this town, this. and I didn't go to a playground. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the city. We did. Oh, we know. <laughs> um, so, again, just thinking about the noise, uh, it, it's awfully close to the neighbors. Um, and even with the trees buffering, I think that's a, a concern of ours. Um, Another question that we had was back, well, I guess over a year ago, we were told there was going to be a survey of the property lines that we would have gotten this past spring, um, but we haven't seen that yet. And I know, I thank you for posting the plan. Everything was online. I was able to read through it and the fencing, especially along that pathway. I'm all about that. <laughs> um, and then there was some replacing of fencing down along where the current drive is. Um, but I think it would be helpful for especially some of our neighbors down on that end to know where those property lines are. Um, I can yeah, I can absolutely. get that up on the township oh, website. That would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, if it exists. Yeah, uh, I think. So we asked our engineers to do the entire property, uh, not not somebody Collins. Uh, they did two sides. There was okay. some miscommunication. Then they went back and did the other two. Okay. So we have that information. Okay. I can get that up probably within a week. It'll be on the Woodlawn Park site. Perfect. We'll, we'll look. I, I think that that would be helpful. Hey, Pat, do we have um, to take any of our land back? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to continue with our questions. <laughs> um, and then I have a question related to the fencing. So noting that, you know, there's the, 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 the metal fence. I forget the name of it. Um, but it's along that prop, those, some of those property lines, does that prevent any of the neighbors from putting up their own privacy fence on the other side? Is there any township regulation on that? Yeah, I think, I think we talked about in the process that there'd be a discussion with each neighbor they wanted to, to if each neighbor wanted to maintain their existing privacy fence and if it's on their property we didn't see an issue with that so because each neighbor has already invested in that so i think that's a discussion that has to happen as this gets developed um and some neighbors may not want a fence anymore we don't know and, and i would say uh we just did it with uh Ferris. i was gonna say boilo too that's not boy farmstead uh we had a meeting with just the residents from around it, uh, telling them what we were doing okay. and had a specific plan with them, whoever properties were attached. I would assume that the same thing will happen here. Uh, Pat's done that in all the places. Whenever we did something, uh, he's invited everybody and we have shown up 
you know, all together at the site. Okay. Just so uh, you know what we're doing and we'll know if you want to do, let's say, a different kind of fence or whatever, or the okay. trees or something. Uh, Pat has had a, a meeting every time we've done a, an actual park. Okay, awesome. So. Thank you. Um, and then this is just another last one, I promise. I'm sorry. So currently on Forest Ave, we do get parking for the park. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know even how to answer or ask this question, but is there any way, I know we have all these lovely other park features, but especially with the, the, the idea of a neighborhood um, rec center, there's a concern that there will be additional parking on Forest Ave, which right now is kind of a tucked away street. It's quieter. Um, the, any consideration whoever's parking there is really a local because I would say out of the 24,000 people that live here yeah. I'd be surprised if 100, 100 we, people know that that entrance is there well, I, well we're gonna make it bigger and brighter and like hey it's really here and that's again another concern and we have frequently um, you know on both sides a few houses down we'll have you know we'll I mean again we, we can walk we're and we have a driveway um, but just thinking about we don't, this, we don't have all this uh, parking there now so they will have a place to park. That's true. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. I just mentioned for the neighbors, just to be clear, if, if the township had the money today and you started design and engineering today, it would be two years before you put a shovel to the ground uh -huh. here. So this is not going to happen overnight. It takes, it's a process of design, engineering, and permitting. So there's, there's a lot of time to work out some of these details. I, 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 don't, that's, I don't agree with that. Because you you have compartmentalized this where we can we can cherry pick certain things, so you know if there's a small amenity that we wanted to add, it's doable in a year. And just so the public know, this has been this was started seven years ago. More than that. Maybe. When we actually went after this, this is a seven year to this point. You just didn't know it. That's how hard it was to get this to funding and different things to get this part. This isn't something new. Uh, we met with the last owner. Uh, we've been dealing with this for quite a long time. It's just we finally got a board that would put up the three million dollars to do this. And you got to realize everybody in the township is paying for this, not just your little area. Uh, we're trying to keep it uh, intimate to the little area as much as we can. But this, this has been ongoing. So when they say two years, uh, we don't want to go out and just spend this money that we have put towards this right away because a grant might take us a year to even get it. Maybe more than a year and a half, sometimes two years. Uh, we want to use that money to piggyback on top of grants. So we might only pay 20% you know, uh, of this if we could get a grant for the whole thing so yeah yes it's not going to happen tomorrow uh, most definitely but what Kevin says you might see little things that might get improved but this plan it's going to take us some time uh, to do it to get grants and to max out our money uh, for this township and any other little changes we might make like I said if the rec center would go somewhere else all of a sudden, you know, we might be tweaking and stuff. So it's not something we're just rushing into to make sure we get this done next year. Mr. President, is it, one can say this is a conceptual plan. Absolutely. Okay, I'll, I'll say one more time. <laughs> this is a conceptual plan. Nothing is placed in stone or concrete yet. Yep. And the 10 million, as soon as Pat gets it, we'll be able to do something. <laughs> Sir Michael Chaveau, uh, Grey Horse Road. Uh, Commissioner Skull, I was absolutely touched by your sincerity. I, I thank you for that. You must be very excited. Sure. Commissioner Spearing, you said that it was a daylight park. My understanding is working with Simone Collins that there will be lighting there, uh, solar lighting during the evening to keep the park somewhat lit. What I'm saying is that you're not going to have a baseball field that has lighting. Uh, but around the, if there's a building there, that's what, well, okay. Pat, add to that, will you? I mean, uh, we're not looking to use the, 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 the ball field. And uh, you're correct. The, the lighting, there'll be some security lighting. Um, there'll be lighting around the basketball courts as there is now, which will go off at 
10 o'clock or whatever the time is currently. I think it's 10 o'clock. And there will be some, we're, we're talking about some low level lighting along the trail. Um, kind of a solar, you know, two foot high lighting system at uh, certain areas along the trail for safety and security. Um, but we also want to make sure that our police, when they go by, they, they have some uh, line of sight, even though it, not all of it is extremely visible, there'll be some light there. So low level lighting for security and the courts will be lit as they are now. Well, thanks for that question. Exceptional. And Commissioner McFatridge, before uh, Peter dropped the $10 million bill on us, you had suggested that this project was going to be five. And of course, five million of that 10 is the rec center. I have been throughout the various committees that I'm involved with, with both Pat and on the steering committee, adamantly against a, a rec center of that size. And I'm somewhat encouraged to hear of the possibility of other locations for such a rec center. So I would say to you, and thank you to Peter for the openness and transparency, that that is too big of a price to pay for a rec center there. A building of some kind in addition to the other ones that are proposed well and good but I don't want to pay taxes on a five million dollar building and even taking into account that the fact that there was an ugly building there there was it's gone I don't want another building I'd rather have one of the green space things that was suggested but my opinion alone is not going to drive this project it's a community event and a building that size I'm strongly against and I'll continue to voice that opinion in my position on the Parks and Recs Committee. Thanks for listening. Thank you. And with, with that, the only thing that I would say is, I don't know if the, when you said you don't want to spend $5 million for a rec center, I don't know if the rest of the township wants to spend $3 million for this park. So it, it's a matter of we have to make decisions based on what we think and input. So whether that Rec Center would go there, it's nice to know we're starting to find out some new opportunities that are possible. They're not even looked into, it's, it's, it's that new. So uh, again, this is conceptual. I, I don't, not, nothing's gonna happen very soon and we do look into things. Like I guess it, you, you think it's, it's seven years for me to try and get it to this point. Because uh, I, I went to school here, same with Kim. Uh, we played football there uh, in the early 60s. So we, we've been around this park for a long time. Uh, soccer and everything else. So we know this ground and we know the neighborhood. When they talk about traffic, yes, it is cut through. It has been as long as since 1958. Uh, you know, it's been the main road over the hill. Even back then, it was the main road. So uh, we, we do understand. Uh, what you're looking at and we are weighing options whether we would put one there or not and depending on money you know, if it's too much money we wouldn't do it go ahead so i just want to make a couple comments so i live right on the corner of woodlawn and silver and i'm happy to hear that there may be other options for a location for the community center i don't think this location is right for it um there's 45 houses surrounding the entire park um, and also financially, I think if you eliminate the rec center here, that would help financially. And then also now that the building is gone, grass is growing. It actually looks like very nice. Like I think less is best and just kind of keep it a simple park. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any, any other questions? Uh, Sam, you, or Pat, would you like to just wrap up with your couple closing? Can I close? <laughs> uh, firstly, uh, thank you, Peter and Sarah and the Simone team. Michelle is not here tonight for leading us through this process. Uh, it's been several months. I know it's been seven years for commissioner, but <laughs> several months. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the manner in which you uh, treated our residents with respect and dignity and listened to all of the comments. And uh, that's one thing that we really uh, were uh, desired to have you lead this for us because we knew that would happen. I'd also like to thank the steering committee um, it is hard work, and when you see the report on the website tomorrow or the next day, I think it's like 180 pages of report. So, <laughs> so they've read through that, and not only that, but they've talked to their, their neighbors, and they've talked to youth groups and other organizations to bring back information to help make this plan uh, the best that it could be, whether we all agree with the exact plan or not. I'd like to thank my staff uh, for the hard work that they did. We field a lot of questions. We field a lot of emails. We provide a lot of information, uh, and the team and the department did a hell of a job, heck of a job. Um, 
and specifically I'd like to thank all the neighbors uh, who came out to all of these meetings, who've communicated with me continuously throughout this process and with Simone Collins uh, to provide their, their feedback and their information. Uh, even when we didn't necessarily agree on things, we found a way to work through them um, and I think come up with a, with a pretty good plan. Again, it, uh, it meets the needs of a lot while not meeting at all. So thank you to all the neighbors and all the community members and to the Board of Commissioners for uh, moving this project along. And I look forward to applying for grants. Once this is approved, it'll be up for 30 days. We'll accept any comments at the end of 30 days at the March 6th meeting. I hope to have this before you with the steering committee recommendation and uh, hopefully this plan will move forward. One of, one of the most important parts of this whole thing is you're sitting in these seats because in a few minutes when I cut this off, you're all gonna leave, we're gonna have like two people here. That's what we get to a meeting. So that's how important it is that you're here. Uh, that's impressive that you have stuck with this through the whole thing. Uh, and I, I just think it's great that one, that the board stayed out of it and we let the community uh, come up with all of this. Uh, and like I said, Simone Collins, I, I think they handled this whole process extremely well. Uh, do you have any comments left? Just, I just encourage, will encourage the board to apply for the grant as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get it this year, you're in line for next year. And uh, I think this is a project that these year will be very excited about. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Okay, because. I just make the comment. I know a lot of you came early and had, had to sit through that whole shopping center thing. <laughs> But not, and we still don't know when the Amazon's fresh is going to open. <laughs> <laughs> or after reading the paper, if. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they might not. Okay. Yes. Because they're talking about the height of the. I'm here for the Woodlawn Park, but I got well, Yes, come up to the, to come up. the microphone. So my question was just because I was got into the uh, shopping center uh, conversation. How tall is the Willow Grove Station Apartments? Do you guys happen to know? From which, uh, from where? From, from the back of the building or from the front of the building? That's the front of the building. The front of the building? The of the building? Five, I think. From the sidewalk. Uh, I think it's no. 45. I think it's five floors in the front and four floors no, it's not in the back by no, the old Fidelity Bank. So just 45? The front, it's the, yeah, that it's, is the opposite. It's five I, and four. Oh, wow. five. But we don't really... We don't know that without looking it up. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say people want to do an extra 20 feet. Right. Yes. And that and, is in. And ma'am, just identify yourself for the record. Just oh. so, yeah. Uh, Lauren Hegard, 320 Woodlawn Ave. Thanks. And before any of us were on here, I think uh, that is the zoning for TC. Just so you know, for the middle of the township, anywhere along Easton Road, where Weinrichs is, where this shopping center is, where Wawa is, all those places, they can go 65 feet. Uh, that, that's zoning. I didn't agree with it then, but you know, it's in, and that's what we're dealing with. 65 with board approval. With board approval, right. but they're allowed to go 65. Uh, 45. So. Yeah, it's not. It's but, not. They, but if they meet the requirements, oh they can. That's what I'm saying. Only downtown <laughs> in the middle. Sorry, <laughs> okay. right, I brought that up. I think we're finished with our presentation. All right. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Wait. Thank you. Stay. We have another hour. This is yeah. Great. Now we're going to have the meeting. We have another board shopping center. <laughs> All right. But if you would, if, if, if you would quietly go to the, the foyer so we can continue because we still got a ways to go. Use the cabinet. Okay, we are going to continue uh, this meeting. We're going to go to room number number five. Public comments, not agenda items only. <laughs> With none, uh, I'll ask for a motion, Treasury's activity report. I'll make a motion to approve the Treasury's activity report for January 2023. Second. We got a first and second. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? All in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. You and I. <laughs> I was thinking on it. Uh, I'll make okay. a motion to approve the minutes from January 9th, 2023. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any uh, comments from the board? Any comments from public? All in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Abstain. Yes. Approved. 
Uh, committee recommendations, finance administration. The finance and administration committee recommends the board of commissioners to act, take action on the following. We have our appointments to, that we move through from committee. So to approve the reappointment of Michael Chavot, I think that was some Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. This one's Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Oh, Kavanaugh, I'm sorry. The Kavanaugh, uh, sorry, I was thinking of Mike Chavot, who was here speaking. Motion to approve the reappointment of Michael Kavanaugh as a Ward 7 representative on the Parks and Rec Advisory Council to serve a new two year term that will expire December 31st, 2024. And will motion to appoint the reappointment of Dean Swedberg as a Ward 5 representative on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Council to serve a new two year term. Both of these terms will expire December 31st, 2024, and they are correct. Okay. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion by the board? Any discussion from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Nays, abstain, approved. <laughs> motion to approve the reappointment of David Kistner as an Upper Mormon Township representative on the Upper Mormon Hopper Joint Sewer Authority for a five year term that's going to expire December 31st, 2027. Second. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any discussion from the board? Asset to the board, strongly support his appointment. Okay, any discussion from public? All in favor say aye. 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 Nays, abstain, approved. <coughs> All right, motion to appoint, point, yeah. The motion to approve the reappointment of the following. Jacqueline Cherpinski, Heather Flaherty, and Michael uh, Vecchio on the Upper One Township Historical Commission and to serve a new three-year term, and they all expire December 31st, 2025. Second. Second. You also have Arlene Rubin, who's part of that group. Ah, uh, yeah. I want that in there. I had another line there. You're right. Yep. Sorry. Okay. I can add, or we have a motion in second. Oh, sorry, I'll we'll do that one next. That's all right. Amend the motion. All right. We'll amend the mo motion for Arlene Rubin. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve Arlene Rubin with that group on the up on Township Historical Commission to serve a three-year term that will also expire on December 31st, 2025. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any board discussion? These, these people, I've worked with all of them on the Historical Commission. They're all fantastic. They all bring uh, a lot of uh, knowledge and, and worth to the, to the team. Happy to reappoint them. Any public discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Abstain. Approve. Okay, uh, H, motion to appoint the reappointment of Joe Lee Price on the Human Relations Commission uh, to serve a three-year term that's going to expire December 31st, 2025. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, board discussion, public discussion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Okay. Um, approved. All right. Uh, motion to approve the reappointment of Lovett Lynette Saunders and Sean Hopkins on the EAC to serve uh, two, uh, both of them are serving new three-year terms to expire January 2nd, 2026. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, board discussion, uh, public discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Nays, abstain, approved. I'm gonna jump down to L and M because the other one's a resolution. Um, L is a motion to approve the reappointment, the appointment of Christian Henderson as a Ward 6 representative on the APA to fill the vacancy left by Jerry Foley and serve the remainder of a two year term that will expire June 1st, 2024. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Board discussion. Uh, public discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Approved. M. Motion to appro approve the reappointment of Donna Rosenbaum on the Environmental Advisory. Uh, council to fill the vacancy left by Henry Sokolowski uh, and serve a new three-year term to expire January 2nd, 2026. Second. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, discussion from the board, discussion from the public. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Uh, uh, approved. Okay. Um, okay. Next, we have the motion to approve resolution R 2023-01, the, reappoint, the, the reappointment of Peter uh, Holleran on the zoning hearing board to serve a new, uh, new five-year term to expire December 31st, 2027. Second. second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, discussion from the board, discussion from the public. All in favor say aye. Aye. Against? Um, um, Approved. 
Next, we go into the list of bills payable. The committee recommends, oh, that concludes uh, appointments. Um, the committee recommends the following uh, bills payable. General fund checks, beginning with check number 136581 and ending with 136807 for a total of $938,371.56 with no voids. Escrow fund checks, beginning with check number 9555, and ending with 9566 for a total of $128,213.83 with no voids. And liquid fuel fund checks, beginning with check number 3049 and ending with 3050 for a total of $181.70 with no voids. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, board discussion? Public discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Against? Abstained? Approved. Okay, 4A, motion to approve resolution R 2023-02, approving the Montgomery County Consortium Cable Finance uh, Franchise Agreement between the Township and Verizon. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, board discussion? And this was discussed in committee. The rate remains the same, even though uh, Verizon's uh, revenues have come down. It's less money for the Township, but it's the rate is just still the same. And it's for five years, not 10. I do. Have, sorry, one question. Um, Randy, has Verizon started deducting the um, the free services yet from our five percent that we get? Not that I've seen, no. Okay. Thank you. Any public comment? I had a question also. Oh, okay. Um, so it lists out the the, the buildings that uh, receive free service within our community, um, and I was wondering uh, if under number one, the Upper Moreland Township building. If that should be broken into two parts, uh, be the administration and the police department as separate entities uh, because of the development that we're proposing. Uh, it's exhibit A, it's, so it's page 309 in our book. It's exhibit A, it's number one. It says Upper Moreland Township Building. Um, and, and that way we don't have to go back to this and, and renegotiate if that building goes up within the next five years. Um, I'm on page. Oh, it's 39. 29, maybe. And then it's a minor thing, but because it's a legal document, uh, number eight for the Willow Grove Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, there's a typo in Davisville. It says Davisville Road. It's fine. I went right over there. <laughs> Good eye. Uh, I read these things. <laughs> I, I read it. I missed it. <laughs> Okay, as far as breaking it apart, would that make a difference in here for our own agreement? Uh, I thought the whole IT department was going to be ran out of one set of servers or something. Yeah, I'll just check with Cullen to see if there's any issues with the current language to accomplish what we're talking about. We may be able to call it the same campaign. Maybe. We did, we did call about, uh, talk about a, a power plant. Yeah. yeah. Do we still want, with your question, or do we still want to approve this then? Um, does it matter if we hold it a month? Does it matter if we hold it a month? I mean, I think if, 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 if Cullen says the current language is accomplished, what you want to accomplish, is that satisfactory? Yeah. Okay. We can, I can We're already voting. A motion to <laughs> yeah, I think say if it accomplishes our current, would um, Anthony? Yeah, uh, it's approved the uh, the you know by the board, provided by review uh, by the township manager. That's probably the way to handle. It. Cool. We need a motion. So moved. Again. So altered. Right. <laughs> right. Second. Okay, we have a first, a second. Uh, and any other board discussion? Any public comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against. Thank you, Anthony. You're yeah. welcome. Okay. Uh, B, motion to approve the revised Eastern Monco Interchange Group Memorandum of Understanding. Second. First, we have a second. Uh, board discussion? Yes. Okay. So, a couple things have changed here. The, uh, the original concept was all Montgomery County. It was called the Montgomery County uh, Turnpike Corridor Study. It, it originally included Upper Marion. It included Whitpaint. Uh, White Marsh Township, I think Plymouth Township. Uh, so 
this is a and and what's missing from this is that was also included in the original draft back in 2014 i believe it was uh was the fact that uh the intention was to have four lanes of travel east and west on the turnpike and they have intentionally removed that from this um so i am very much in support of being part of this consortium and this recording in progress <laughs> we can start over now with recording <laughs> so uh i i am voting to support this but i i do want to make sure that those ideas and those concepts are included in our representation at these meetings and um they're proposing like i would say a, a welsh road interchange at, for like somewhere around 130 million dollars just to pull a number so how many miles of four lanes of traffic would east and west would 130 million dollars give us and i really think that's important to have um, it included in these meetings okay and it was part I'm of the sure this group is going to, um, I'll, I'll that. But I think they're going to be looking at what they can do on the turnpike. The interchanges. Remember, this is more than just turnpike stuff. I think they also want to, to try and regionally plan. This is one of the challenges Pennsylvania has with our, our structure of government. Regional planning is challenging. And so uh, this is an effort to, to more fully regionally plan by getting all these municipalities together. Right. So Upper Marion got what they needed out of this out of this uh, committee. Yeah. Well, this is a completely different animal than that committee. It says revised interchange. This is only revised from the last meeting right. that we yeah. had. This is the Eastern Montgomery County interchange group. So this is different than the one that existed a couple of years ago because that was looking yes. at all of the turnpike going through Montgomery County. This is just looking Kevin at Kevin's arguing. You argued about that because you wanted it connected to the county line. Oh, I know that. I mean, well, they never included Lower Murray and Lower Moreland, and they and they still called it the Montgomery County Plan. Okay, and I just want to also mention that this is costing the township ten thousand dollars a year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other comments from the board, from the public? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against. Abstain. Or abstain. Okay, and 4C, motion to approve resolution R 2023 06, certifying the active members of the township's volunteer fire companies eligible to receive the 2022 tax credits pursuant to the volunteer service credit program. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Board discussion. This is a great incentive for anybody out there who wants to be a volunteer firefighter. So think on this and join, Come join the join. team. Okay, uh, public comment. All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstain. That Approved. concludes business for finance and administration, sir. Community Development Committee. Okay, Community Development Committee uh, has multiple <coughs> items of action. Here. Gotta be out here by 11. There you go. Okay. We're getting there. Uh, we have no code enforcement issues, no land development subdivision applications, and the list of upcoming zoning hearing board applications are we have two scheduled for the ninth, that is this Thursday. Uh, petition of uh, Paul Zarali for the property located at 3230 Byberry Road, Happer Section, North Moon Township. Applicant seeks variance from Upper Moreland Township Code for an accessory building size of 700 square feet instead of the maximum 300 square feet. Uh, and and a, uh, for a wall height of 10 foot instead of the maximum 9 foot. Property located in the R3 Zoning District. Um, the second application is for uh, a Jenner Lopez. Lopes, I'm sorry, for property located 800 Fitzwatertown Road uh, in Willow Grove. Applicant seeks a special exception from the Upper Moreland Township Code for an automotive body shop. Property is located in the C2 Zoning District. That is it. Uh, 
it's just an announcement. Um, the uh, community development committee. Wait, we're going to skip. Uh, item A has been tabled. We'll make a motion to table this. Uh, yeah, this is the ordinance. I was going to say. I'll make a motion to table it. Or he can make a motion. The motion, we have a second. Uh, discussion, because of earlier, uh, it's being. Uh, it's tabled so that we can continue the public hearing. Yep. Okay. Uh, any other discussion up here? Anybody from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Approved. So that takes a lot of public comment. Uh, motion to uh, the community development committee recommends motion to approve resolution resolution R twenty twenty three authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Lower Moreland Township regarding multi municipal application to the Department of Environmental Protection for recycling program grant. Second. <laughs> we have, we have a first, we have a second. Uh, we're discussion. This is uh, we can maximize putting our paperwork in with Lower. Moreland, and I think we get eighteen thousand dollars more. So that that's what that's about. Dis disgusting committee. Okay. Uh, Any other discussion from the board? No. Nope. Okay. Public. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Against. Abstained. Approved. Let us see. Uh, community development committee recommends the motion to approve resolution R twenty twenty three oh four, authorizing township manager. To execute required forms and documents for the FEMA PEMA buyout program. Second. Okay, we have a first, we have a second. Board discussion. This uh, is. Want to finish, Kev? No, just, yeah. Um, storm from 2021, September, I think it was September 1st. Um, two. Several properties, um, well, two, pro two properties located in Surrey Lane and three properties located on, on Laurie Lane. All in word five. It's not called, going to cost the township any, anything. Other than our time, yeah. Aye. Right. Yeah. And what well, we thank you to the staff. And all we are doing here is uh, letting the township manager sign for things so it doesn't have to come back to us. Yeah. And it was a decent amount of work. Thank you. I expect that's really important to those families. And all the best for the people with their hardships. Okay. Any other discussion from? Here, uh, public. Well, yes. Gene um, Sheriff Cunningham, and I'm on the EAC. So, can we plant trees on that? What? 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 Can we plant trees on the property after it goes through that? I believe so. Um, but we just need to confirm that there's an easement that they'll hold, and the idea is that we need to allow the water to flow. So, we probably have to need to plant appropriate trees. Okay, we're always looking to plant more trees. <laughs> Thanks, <Jim. laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, stay right up there. <laughs> all, all in favor say aye. 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 Against. Approved. D. Okay, uh, letter D. The uh, Community Development Committee recommends uh, approval resolution R 2023, adopting initiatives recognized. Pennsylvania Audubon Council in Birdtown and authorized the EAC to use Upper Moreland Township agent as an agent uh, for Birdtown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Second. Motion, we have a second. Uh, board discussion. Yeah, I just want to say it's 2023-05. Five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, discussing committee, discuss at the EAC, um, continuation of and hopefully expansion of a program we've been Participating long for a long time, Audubon Society, uh, Society changed their rules and signage, and just we're just staying with what we have. I would encourage more people to uh, become Birdtown members. Uh, any public comment? All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Pass. Letter E. Community Development Committee recommends. The approval and ratification of sub submission of the 2023 Greenlight Go Grant for singleization upgrades for 611 and Route 263. Second. second. We have a second. Uh, board discussion. Discussed in committee for a long time. It's it's mostly all the lights on Easton Road and just a few going up York Road. I think it's important for us to reiterate too because it's not necessarily written here that 
there is a, uh, a hefty total associated with the match, but the idea was to spread that out over the course of several years, years. In, in our budgeting exercises. So it's not a lump sum hit. Okay. Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstained? Approved? Uh, just uh, the grants. Okay, letter F. Uh, CDC committee recommends to approve the KCBA contract to provide design services for the renovation of the township building construction of the police station. Second. Motion, we have a second. Board discussion? Uh, I'd just like to say thank you um, to, to you, Matt, for uh, negotiating this. Um, and for KCBA, I had requested a couple changes, uh, some financial requests um, that did the township a little bit of money. And they accepted them, so thank you. Uh, they, had, they had no problem making that change. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony, for your astute uh, contrib contributions to this uh, particular committee. Thank you. Everything. Thanks. Any public comment? <laughs> okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Approved? Letter G. Community Development Committee recommends the approval of the surveys and cost proposals for the municipal complex and the public works facility submitted by Gilmore and Associates. Second. Motion, we have a second. Board discussion? Uh, um, go, ahead. go ahead. We've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. Um, the uh, complex that we're sitting in now is, it really needs to be surveyed for things we're planning to do and the addition of the um, public works building is long overdue. This is so we know where our property lines are. <laughs> and and, and all, all of these, uh, all these studies have been budgeted uh, either within the budget for the reconstruction of this campus or for the studies that we already worked into our, our 2023 budget for the public works facility. So uh, it's us uh, jumping ahead on some of the due diligence that we need to do as a community. Any public input? All in favor say aye. 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 Against, abstained, approved. Okay. Letter H. Community Development Committee recommends uh, approval of motion to approve authorization for Gilmore Associates to advertise bids for Carson Simpson Stream Bag Stabilization Project. Second. Okay. Motion second. Uh, any board discussion? Carry over from the YMCA uh, construction and uh, money that was allocated for stream bank stabilization along with a host of other stormwater management items on that campus okay any public comment all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. against uh, approved that concludes business of community development committee thank you very much public health and safety committee public health and safety committee this time has nothing to submit board of commissioners and you it's definitely the quickest thing it's on this whole list of yeah. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you oh birds birds parks and recreation committee mr skull yes mr president the parks and Recre recreation committee has uh, three items uh, to for the board number one is the motion to approve the staging area request and memorandum of understanding between the township and alan myers inc for the uh, or Mr. Bridge Repair Project. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, Pat, did you want to say something? Uh, yes, if it's appropriate time. Commissioner had asked uh, for three things to go along with this. One was, um, is there an ENS plan? There's no ENS plan required. However, they inform me that they will install a 12-inch uh, filter sock fence around the disturb areas and stockpiles and stabilize any stockpiles not in use. Um, and they ran that by Paul Patel, and Paul Patel had no concern with that. Second, well, and, and they can give us a, a plan um, with that. Second was, um, since it was property purchased with flood buyout money, we wanted to ensure that whatever they had there, if uh, eminent rain was coming and potential for flood, they would remove it. They have assured us that they will, and they will be putting up temporary fencing around their areas. So I think if the board moves this forward, we can add those three items to the memorandum of understanding, uh, and they're in agreement with all three of those. Great, thank you very much. Uh, uh, a rock cleaning it and out. They, they do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, any board comment? Any public comment? All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Approved? Uh, number two, dear to my heart. Uh, motion to approve bid recommendations for the Farmstead Park Environmental Improvement Project. Second. Gladly. We have a motion. We have a second. Any board comments? Any public comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Abstain. Okay, number. Oh, sorry. No problem. Number three, motion to approve authorizing the Parks and Recreation Director to advertise bids for the structural improvements to historical buildings at Farmstead Park. This is the one that's due to my heart. Second. Second. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion from the board? Take that fence down. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from the public. All in favor say aye. 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 Against? Aye. Abstain? Approved. Uh, any commissioner comments? Oh, Kevin's going to take a seat here. Okay. Uh, with that, we're adjourned. <laughs>